What up, stream? Hello. How are you guys doing? I bleached my tips, and you can barely see it. I didn't really like talk about that much in the gaming stream, but I, I felt like it was more of a painting stream thing than a gaming stream thing. What happened to the minis? Bleach tips. Um. What uh? What what minis, Matt Wood? Looks good. Thank you, Toilet Toads. I appreciate it. How are you guys doing today? This lovely Tuesday. Double D's minis, Hersher Mask. Got frost just in time for the snow, huh? Indeed. Indeed. Uh, I think we got a, I think we got them frosted last week Thursday. So we're a couple days ahead. This got bring the storm. I man. I hope not, because I have to drive it into Wisconsin to visit my parents for uh, uh, Christmas. So I hope I didn't bring the storm. Did you win enough with your Greyjoys? And so they finally deserve paint. I mean, I did the opposite of paint them recently. I uh, I unpainted my models, and not intentionally. Um, he breaks the snow. It looks surprisingly good on you. Thank you. Yeah, I. Uh, I can, turns out I can uh, play the part of internet fuckboy with uh, my bleach tips. <laughs> Evan liked that one. <laughs> play the part of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Play the part of. Uh, we're painting some silence men today. Um, I was, uh, the, the, the video I'm working on right now is living like Vince for a week and as part of that week of hobbying, which is already, uh, over now, um, I started some uh, silence men. And so I got a lot of them pretty far and I also did up a bunch of bases, um, in that typical style that I'd done previously. T tell me more about those bases, Scott. I don't want to. <laughs> Scott the miniature fuckboy. boy. <laughs> You're always an internet fuckboy, my heart has got nice. Um, dress for the job you want. Um, now we just need to see red tips as the next logical step. Yeah, that would be the next logical. So, okay, what did I mean by I unpainted my miniatures? Well, I was casting some of these bases and uh, we'll, let's go to the paint cam just so we can see what these look like. You guys, you guys are familiar with these bases? Uh, I, I'm, I'm casting the inserts that go into these bases, um, not the entire thing. Um, the, the entire thing is a cobalt keep base. Um, and I'm, I use something called liquid plastic. It's a, uh, what's the, this classic brand that everyone uses for stuff? Uh, smooth on, um, smooth on, smooth cast 300. Um, and it's a white opaque, uh, liquid plastic. Alamo six, thanks for gifting a sub. We appreciate it. I love cobalt. Their new wet palette is great. I haven't checked that one out yet. Um, anyways. I was casting these bases, and as part of the process, you get to mix two parts together, much like most epoxy resins that you're familiar with. Um, and I was mixing them in a cup like this. Um, and just so you get a visual on what's going on here, I'm holding the cup with my fingers, because it's small and lightweight, and it would move around uh, otherwise. I'm holding it right here, giving it a good stir, and uh, I want you to note something about the height of this cup as it relates to the height of a miniature. Okay. We're, we're seeing that they're kind of the same height, you know, about head height is at the top of the, the cup here. And so while I was mixing, this has got to have a stream schedule. Yes, it's on this channel. Uh, but just so you know, every Tuesday is from 1 to 3 p.m. CST, we're painting, and every Thursday is 7 to 10 p.m. CST, we're gaming. Anyways, I'm sitting here, I'm mixing, and then I don't know what I was doing, but I guess I got a little too close to the top of the lid and my stirring stick did this. Just a little flick outside the edge, away from me. Got some liquid plastic on my desktop. No big deal, but what happened was that I was mixing up resin bases for all of the Greyjoy models that I hadn't based yet, but had painted. I've been painting a lot of Greyjoy models one by one, you know, slowly but surely, making sure they look nice. And all those fucking models were out in front of me preparing to be based. And so I showered every single one of them. I don't think a single one that was out on my desk did not get uh, totally unscathed or did not get absolutely just showered in this liquid plastic. Every single fucking one. So we have Eric Ironmaker covered in liquid plastic. Baron Blacktide, 
Roderick Harlaw. Balon Greyjoy. God damn, Balon got doused. He got doused. Asha. Asha had a good time. Wendy. Uh, another B. Is that Baylor? Baylor Black Tide and one of the Black Tide chosen that I had painted. Uh, so seriously, yeah, every. I think the ones I didn't get doused that were painted were the ones that I painted for that, like, I, when I painted the Reavers, one 10 minute, one hour, and 10 hour. Those ones uh, were still in my case, but the rest of my painted Greyjoys uh, that weren't based are all, are all tote. Uh, even some unpainted ones got totally showered in liquid plastic. It's sad, you know, because like, it's a waste of time, you know? I don't necessarily care about the money. The money is not that big of a deal, but the fact that I have to redo all of these, because I was painting characters that I used a lot. And so it's not like these were like random ones that I was just painting because they happened to be in the box together. Like these were all characters that I use all the fucking time. And so I have to repaint them all again. Some of them, I don't know, like this guy largely is okay, um, but it's just so much, it's so much on the back of him that's fucked up. Um, and the, the plastic doesn't chip off very nicely without removing the paint with it, unfortunately. Frosted um, his tips and now his minis. Yeah, What's ex next? Exactly. I hope nothing else, honestly. I hope that's the last of the frosting. Yeah, it was uh, big, big depressing coming in here and seeing that. Oh, man. Like, yeah, it's just honestly the waste of time is the biggest offense. Um, the moment it happened, I knew I was doomed. Uh, <laughs> I brought them to the sink, trying to rinse them off with uh, isopropyl and a, a soft brush. I figured the paint had cured for like, you know, months now. So maybe it has a little bit of strength to it. Um, and then maybe the ISO would get rid of the, the resin, but it's like a fast uh, curing resin, cures in 30 minutes. And when it has like a little bit of it, like caught in all the nooks and crannies of the model, it just kicks off so fast because it's such a small amount that that heat that it creates just cures the resin so fast. And so I had, I had minutes before I was totally doomed. And nothing I did made a difference. Feels bad, man. Yeah. We because have all they're this... plastic models, you can't just re-zero them easily without just melting the model. Yeah, pretty much. Because the, the resin's going to be subject to the same sorts of things that'll melt the plastic. So. Yeah. And I don't even know if it's resin because it's literally called liquid plastics. So I think maybe that makes it even worse. Uh, um, we got what a bunch I do of... know is that there's a bunch of fresh models and boxes sitting over here. They are. So the, I guess the silver lining is that CMI was uh, very nice to me and they sent me a bunch of uh, models to replace the ones that I fucking destroyed. <laughs> Tried freezing them. Freezing them. I mean, I could try at this point, I'll do anything. Um, sadly, the isopropyl did take off some of the paint. So if we look at Baylor here, you can see that his face, uh, you know, started to lose some paint here. But okay, here's my thing. Even if freezing them does work, like, do you think it's gonna really be possible to like get the liquid plastic like out of these, like the fur of this guy's cloak? You know, it's just, it's just gonna. I mean, this is probably one of the worst ones too. Maybe there are some other ones where it's like more worthwhile, but man, this is it's it's bad. Looks like we got some uh, some pity subs. I'll take them. Uh, literal mage, lazy couch. Thanks for the subs. I think there were some other ones that I missed as well. Yeah, there's a few that we gotta get to here. I'm just fixing the sub goal right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, just like a couple weeks ago, it did not auto-update. Uh, let's see, from the start, we've got uh, Hesher Mask, Dad Bod Nap God, <laughs> Alamo6 gifted a sub, uh, Sir Q Mini Painter, Sir Mini Painter, not sure. Uh, and then Hoppet Kiss, Literal Mage, and Lazy Couch. Thank you guys for the subs. I appreciate it. Did you get the very last one, Ludong? Oh, yeah. No, I was going to let you get that one. Oh, nice. Ludong, thanks for the sub as well, guys. We appreciate it. Um, yes, I'm not drinking Diet Dew. That's more of a John thing. I drink Dr. Pepper. I'm the Diet Dew drinker in the stream yeah. today. Yeah. Someone said... Time to make a Greyjoy Others conversion. Nice, yes. Um, looks to me like you need to cut your losses and walk away. That's definitely how I feel. That's a very, very much so how I feel. 
I'm amazed how much a flick of a brush coated. Dude, me too. Not only did it go in the worst direction, but like I got it all over all the models. <laughs> it's yeah, it just one or two. It would be like, yeah, that sucks, but no big deal. But right. it was like everything. Every fucking everything. thing. No mercy. But, you know, you got to think about this positively, Scott. It just means that next time they'll be painted even better. Yeah, that's true. A lot of the models I painted, I painted them in a scheme that I really liked, actually. Like, the way it was organized on the model. Like, I liked, I liked Wendemir, I liked Asha a lot. I liked Balon uh, a lot. Actually, I didn't like Balon. I liked Baylor a lot. So I had a lot figured out already. So that means that the second time around, it's going to be a lot easier. But... Um, what are we doing now? What's your plan? Repair? Nah. To me, these models are dead. Uh, the plan is to repaint whole new models. Um, just because I don't think it's worth it to like scrape off all this stuff just in hopes that, you know, it'll look 80% of the way there. But the moment you look closely to it, it'll kind of just be scuffed looking. So I think I'll, I'll just call my losses. Think of the content though. Yeah, maybe there's some content there. Maybe. Didn't think about that. Um, right now, um, just taking an airbrush uh, to these uh, silence men's uh, pants and straps and belts and axe handles. Trying to be careful, not get it on the cloak. I'm not right. too worried if I do. Right now, Scott is proving that real is in fact brown. Wait, gray is in fact brown? Is that what you said? No, I said real is brown. Ah. Uh. Break time. TSA wreck your A case. I got one of them I've just flown out now. One of them flown out. One of them that I've flown with and now I'm terrified. Yeah. Um, they did. They wrecked my case, but that's okay. No, they didn't. Scott, the guy said that his machine didn't do that. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was no way that could happen. There's no way. My machine didn't. You're trying to scam me. <laughs> yeah. So I guess. I don't know, some scanners, maybe maybe just make sure that the scanner you're putting it in is high enough for the case. Um, lay it down on its side, maybe, if the magnets are strong enough, and then you probably won't get crushed. Scotty Bugatti, what up, Caleb Sweet? What up, Daddy Bibbs? Um, brown doesn't exist, it's only orange in different contexts. Man, you can say that about so many colors. No, 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 orange doesn't exist. It's just different shades of brown. Mm. I can tell his argument's gonna go places. <laughs> How's the escalation league going? So the next next Thursday, so in two days, we are playing the one thousand point game between me and Curtis. Now that's a little bit early. I think we're like a couple days, if not a whole week early. So we're still in seven fifty, but we're almost in one thousand points. Hmm. We also had someone asking about uh, an update on the Kickstarter. Oh yeah, about what specifically? Uh, any updates on shipping timeframes? Oh yeah, so that depends. Um, everything's gonna get shipped out when all the physical goods are at their fulfillment centers. The plinths just got finished and they got shipped to the fulfillment centers. That's great. We are still waiting on the models to get done casted. Uh, to, sorry, to finish casting. And we've had kind of an unfortunate setback that I discovered uh, yesterday and today. Um, they sent me quality assurance versions of the all three models for the 32 millimeter scale. Um, and the Witch looked great, but the Ranger and the Warrior were both old versions of the STLs, uh, not the new updated ones that we had gone through several revisions on. And so they're gonna need to Unfortunately, reprint them in the latest version, cast them once, and then send them to me for review because we weren't casting the actual latest version, sadly. Um, so 
when all that casting is done um, and all of that arrives at the various fulfillment centers, then we can start um, shipping all out all the physical goods to everyone. That is the current update. You're welcome, Cornflake Justice. So, Frosted Tubes, <laughs> hashtag best content creator ever. <laughs> I'm certainly not the first content creator to make a fool of myself after getting a bunch of subs, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, a song you used on one of your videos has been stuck in my head for a week and I've been losing my mind trying to find the video again to no avail. God damn, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Well, there's an easy solution. Just watch all of his videos. Yeah. In a row. With the ad blocker, of course, off. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Get uh, get uh, YouTube Premium. Yeah, or that. Happy with either. I gotta say, I am so much more confident in my airbrush abilities as of late, and I don't know why. You um, went through some reps on those Skelly Boys. I, you're right. I totally did. But like right now, I'm painting just the pants, and I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job at hitting the parts that matter. Like. But also the order of operations matters here. It's like this, this, these pants were like dark blue beforehand. And I'm like avoiding the edges, which is where overspray would happen the most. But also it just creates natural shading. So it's like, I don't know, this, this, I, feel, I feel good about the airbrush right now. And I want to use it a lot on, uh, especially my army painting stuff. I, I don't know why you, you bothered to interrupt yourself to say that. Because now inevitably you're going to make a mess of it. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. You just jinxed yourself. Shit. Uh, I do think that uh, natural and soft tones like greens and browns, it's easier to blend without uh, suddenly being like, oh my god, I have ruined this model. Absolutely. A little bit of brown overspray just looks like weathering or shading. Yes. Whereas with if you were spraying hot pink right now, you'd have to be extra judicious. You are totally right. And what I will say also is that I have one more airbrush step after this, and it's a dark blue shade. And if I were had if I were to have done that first and then done that done this, that would have been unwise because I can actually clean up mistakes with this step with that dark blue color. So organizing your painting steps make uh, using the airbrush even easier too, because you can hide a lot of crimes with a, a dark universal shadow color that all hues in your scheme share. No PPE? I don't know what PPE stands for. Personal protective equipment. Not at the moment, no. I'm doing a very small amount of airbrushing. When I did this entire, like this unit and all these bases, I think two days in a row, I was wearing a mask the entire day. Um, but I'm not too concerned about this small amount. Do you think Greyjoys could come back from being down 33-0? Like in a in a game, you're losing by 33 victory points? I don't think that that's possible. Yeah, <laughs> what's, the, what's the context here, doomed traveler? I'm annoyed that your hair doesn't look terrible with frosted tips. I'm sorry. <laughs> Huddleston, the, the key is if you're a generally good looking person, you remain generally good looking. Yeah. And if you're uh, a generally not good looking person, it's a really uphill battle. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Yes, I, I understand the joke now, Sammy D. Do you think the Greyjoys could have a recovery like the, oh, the NFL ah, Vikings? Yeah, yes, the yes. Vikings coming back 36 to 39 to 36? Something like that, yeah. 39 to 36, yes. I have uh, someone in my Instagram loves the Vikings. And even though I've told him that I don't really care about sports, he's like, I'm gonna fucking text you this season or whatever, message you, whenever they do anything great. And he messaged me about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I work at a sports radio station part-time and have for a decade. I can speak like I know what I'm talking about about sports, but yeah. I just do not care. <laughs> What up, Krish? You watched the Team M video, glad to hear it. Biggest question, what did Amber think of your hair? Um, I think she was largely okay with it. She was the one that did did the work. Um, and I think the only issue is that, like, 
straight across my hair. It was like a pretty obvious like line where the bleach tips start. Um, and also like if you're like my hair is kind of like orangey yellow. If you wanted to actually bleach your tips like frosted, you would put some toner in. But we didn't we didn't do that. <laughs> the Vikings are great, but how about the morticians? Absolutely, Mike Genie. Uh, Empress questionable taste confirmed. Although I guess we knew that because she married Scott. Feels bad, man. That's a thought. Aren't we friends, bro? What 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 do we what what do we do to each other? Why can't we be friends? Can I wear my Jinko pants? Sure. Again, some build up here on this tip. Looks like it. I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I want to try out the war game. Should I watch the show first or just buy a random group? Um, I just bought a random group that I thought looked cool. I didn't really know much about the Greyjoys. Turns out they're kind of bastards, um, but I'm for that. I love me some villains. I mean, setting doesn't really have any good factions. That's true. It's, uh, it's, it's Games Workshop. No one's the good guys. Kind of, yeah. Because everyone wants to be a bad guy, but they don't really want to be a bad guy. The, uh, the game is uh, really good. It's cheap to get into. And uh, there are lots of good faction guides out there, but, you know, just pull the trigger on whatever you think looks cool or whatever play style matches what you like to play. Yeah, I'd be happy to advise on uh, factions if you have a certain kind of play style that you know you like in various games. Why, hello, sexy person, the Dark Knight printy. Not so good, guys. Right. Everyone's a bastard. <laughs> Uh, any opinions on Conquest, Last Argument of Kings, models? If so, what army would you play? Actually, it's an interesting question uh, because I recently visited Uncle Adam and Vince in uh, Ohio, and uh, Uncle Adam told me something about that that uh, company that I wasn't aware of uh, prior, and that was that for the longest time they weren't using like a super high quality material for their molds just because they're very expensive. Like they're plastic injection molded models. And so every single mold is made out of metal, uh, aluminum specifically. So either the material they were using wasn't great or the mold material they were using wasn't great. Casting or mold making, one of the two. Can't remember which one. Um, and so for a long time they had really soft, not great details, but they've recently upgraded to a nicer material for their molds or whichever one it was. Um, and now are getting much better results. Um, I did, uh, look through their entire range and find a couple of models that I really, really dug. They're kind of like uh, snooty, uh, human-looking dudes. Um, I can't remember their names, though. But, uh, Evan, did you ever end up playing that game at all? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Which game? Uh, Parabellum's game, Conquest, Last Argument of Kings. Oh, no, I don't own any of that game. Okay. And I was going to go check it out. They were doing demos at Game Center, and I just wasn't able to make the schedule line up. Okay. It will happen at some point. I do like that the models are big. Like you hear my dude? Thank you, Dark Knight. Any tips for going to Adepticon? Going for the first time this year. Um, yeah, sure. I got some advice for you. There's not a ton to do like for four days straight. Um, like I feel like at Gen Con, you could like do shit every day. Uh, you could just go to the vendor hall every single day, and that would like fill up your entire day. I, I, that's my impression of Gen Con. I've never been though. Is that, is that accurate, Evan? I mean, it depends on what you what you consider doing stuff. Vendor hall is pretty big, but I don't think that most people would enjoy spending 
the whole time there. However, there are so, so many demos and events and play groups and competitions and all that stuff on top of that. So there, yeah, Gen Con is enormous. I think the same is true about Adapticon to a lesser extent. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you're there for a long time, you should either A, come with friends, because the friends just make it so much better, um, or B, you should um, have classes planned to take up some time, because there, there is a big table there called Fort Wapples table where you can just sit down and paint, and there's free paint available, and that can take up as much time as you want to take up. Um, but otherwise, you know, I don't, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of bored. And the only reason why I wasn't bored, like the first two years I went, was because I was making videos. And so I was like walking around and interviewing people that I thought were like famous painters and stuff. But if I wasn't doing that, I don't really know what I would have been doing. Um, but demos are a huge thing. Those are going on all the time. There are a lot of free events that go on. I just never really pay attention to them. They make like an app that you can check. Um, so you can find out like what's going on at any given hour of the day. And maybe I would advise installing that app and checking it out. I think it's called C, C Event, the letter C Event. Apparently Con John's a party animal. He absolutely is. Yeah, that, that would be the piece of advice that I would give for any con goer is don't overdo it on the first day. Don't, don't pull a con, John. Cool. Got a whole weekend to enjoy. That is true. Mike Genie asks, what part of the app tells you where to get puked on by Con John? <laughs> I'm not sure that's in this year's Adepticon guide, but, uh, you know, send him an email about it. Maybe they'll add it. You got to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Normally, 2 a.m., buy a Space Marine statue. It's a great place. <laughs> Where can I download the VinciCon app? <laughs> it's not available, unfortunately. Not yet, at least. Are you doing a uh, Tup Live at Adepticon this year, Scott? We're fucking trying to, man. Uh, the event coordinators just do not like emailing us. <laughs> Um, I like email. It's like I got in touch with Devin, Damon Drescher and we were kind of going back and forth and he was like, okay, you gotta talk to this other guy because he's in charge of like big room events. And so he messaged, I emailed him back in October and like I got a lot of shit going on. So I don't, I didn't, wasn't checking my email. Like it's guys responding and like we just found out re recently that he never responded. And so we just emailed them again um, saying like, hey, what are your thoughts on accommodating an event like this? And they're like, or that one guy was like, at this point, I think the only thing available is gonna be the Hyatt, which is a different hotel, very close to Adepticon. But you don't really wanna go to a different hotel. So, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, last time we were, we were in a small room at Adepticon, and it was just, it was too small. We were like a fire hazard. There were too many people in that room. And so we're looking for a bigger room, but we we're having issues with uh, the, the uh, scheduling. <laughs> Con John sounds like a cryptid. <laughs> All right, chat, I need your help. I got to paint this, these guys' skin. And the way that I painted the skin originally, and I kind of like it, uh, was with like a really rich skin tone. Uh, and I'm just kind of curious what you guys would do in this situation where you have like a brighter off-white yellow zenithly applied highlight to the skin tone. Are we, I mean, I, I've never been satisfied with like a contrast paint equivalent of skin from any brand. I could just paint over it and paint skin like I normally paint it. Um, but I'm curious if you guys got any better ideas. Let me know. Um, Oh yeah, and if anyone's got any opinions about a uh, about monument brushes, leave them in the chat for Jake the Baron. Oh, 
Also, we haven't really talked about it, but the bar's been there the whole time. If we hit 50 subs to this stream, we're giving away a Brathian Heroes Box 3. It's got uh, Stannis on horseback and Crescent and Patchface in it. And all three of them will give your opponents cancer. <laughs> uh, some would say even just playing Baratheons. No, not that bad. But yes, we're giving this away today. Byron, Faring, Dale Seaworth, Patchface, Justin Macy, or Massey, Crescent, and Stannis Baratheon. Yeah, I mentioned all the stuff that's worth playing. The rest of it's trash. It's all trash. It's trash. But uh, Patchface is wild. Crescent's very good. And uh, Mounted Stannis is just like lean into the most cancerous thing in the faction. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do it, but a varying skin tone would be nice. Right now I'm rocking Graveyard Earth, an old Citadel paint. Uh, on the original model, I used Gobi Brown, but I wanted to use Graveyard Earth because I plan to use, uh, an, I think, a Express paint on one part of the pants. And so I wanted a more of a satin paint than I did uh, a more matte paint. I don't know how much it really matters because it seems like any brush or any paint you apply through an airbrush tends to get pretty matte. But, you know, we're trying. Oh, chat, I finally watched Barbarian and Smile. So now I can, uh, now I can comment on that. Graveyard Earth Rock Sad is gone. Yeah, it was one of my favorite brown colors as well. How do you avoid spot rubbing when, when airbrushing so close to the mini? Malekith, make sure I check out my airbrushing video called uh, don't know how to airbrush start here, I think is what it's called. But essentially the thing is I'm on a lower pressure. So the closer I get to the model, uh, the less bad rubbing occurs. But also when I'm airbrushing, I am pulling back a tiny amount each time. And I'm, I'm basically airbrushing like this, like watch my finger. Like that's what I'm doing. And then the, all the air that comes out aside from the paint dries that paint pretty quickly. Just little, little tiny pulses. You watch Banshees of Inisherin? Nice. I haven't seen that one yet. It's a very delicate balance, Malekith. You want to make sure it's like a it's like a combination of being far enough away from the model, blowing air in between. A certain dilution of paint. It all, it all affects um, spider webbing. Sounds like you're saying Ed Sheeran. Oh yeah, I actually don't know how to, I think it's in a Sheeran, but I don't know. I would, I would go almost a pale skin color with redness where the cold temps would cause the blood to flush. Uh, gotcha, okay, so elbows and cutting out. How much do you still have paint that is old? Do you just not use it that much or own a lot of it? Um. I don't know. I don't use a ton of my old paint, if I'm being totally honest. I have a lot, a lot of old Citadel paint that I really don't need to, to own, but I still do. Um, and I use some of it every now and then. I use Rotting Flash, I use Graveyard Earth. I use a couple of colors, um, but I would say at least 85% of it I don't use. Set Hunter, thanks to the subscription, five months. Appreciate it, my dude. Do you have tin bits? I, I mean, I did at one point. I don't, I don't think I still do. I don't think I still do. All right, getting these pants done. Give me your tin bits. I got chestnut ink, man. I got that. You like tin bits? I feel like of all the metal paints that I use, um, the ones I like the most were Chainmail and Mithril Silver. Those ones were, whoo-hoo, goddamn. 
It's not like I said Timbits. Made me hungry for some Tim Hortons. Yeah, a little, some, 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 some Timmies. Bolt gun metal MVP. It was certainly a great paint. And I think to this day still continues to be, although I haven't used it in a while, but it was great. Going out for some Timmy's there, are you bad? Thoughts on Prof. He's pretty good. I like Prof. I like Prof. I like Young Gravy. All those guys are pretty good. I have one of Prof's uh, albums on record, I think. Let me get rid of my dry tip. It's also important. I can see that buildup right there. The, the tolerances on... They probably um, don't, honestly. That's was, so tiny. What? The buildup on the tip. What? You said see that buildup. Oh. Well, here let me let me let me take it off, and you can let me know there's a difference in terms of the needle diameter. Um. You saw how little I was pushing down on uh, that needle. That it's such a tiny opening. The tolerance is so small that the slightest buildup. You'll notice instantly. You'll be like, okay, this is working. This is this is making paint come out of my airbrush. And then like a minute later, it, it no longer will be. So you find yourself pulling more on the trigger, make more paint come out. And then you'll keep doing that and you'll keep doing that until you're drowning the model a little bit. So just take the time every once in a while. You can even do it after each model or after every, every two models. Kind of depends on the paint. Some of them dry, cause dry tip faster than others. Um, just to uh, clean your needle off so you get that accuracy back because that, that really does slow you down. Warp lock bronze ain't the same as tin bits. Warp lock bronze. I don't think I, I don't think I knew that one. Did I miss discussion on Scotch Sugar Ray hair? Looks great, I'm not making fun of him. <laughs> Sugar gay? What'd you say? Yes, we, we did discuss the bleach tip briefly. Scott Fietti. <sighs> Whenever you're airbrushing on things like this, you gotta be mindful of like how overspray is gonna land on the model. So I'm airbrushing it from this direction and then I'll come through and I'll hit it on this direction. But I'm just trying to avoid, I, there's no way I'm gonna only get paint on the ax half itself, so. I'm just trying to avoid getting paint on the the area below. It's because it's, you know, it's a shadow. It's gonna show up like crazy. The amount of times I've blasted a model with paint because I over pulled and a block needle caught me, taught me to take airbrushing with a bit more patience. Mm -hmm. You and me both. Um, absolute, absolutely. Rumor is Scott's hair went to Flavortown. That's how it looked after it came back. Absolutely. It's not just a dry tip that can cause that too. If you have an internal blockage, don't know it. You can be blowing paint through your airbrush for a whole paint session, things are going fine. You might say, oh yeah, this paint seems a little thicker than usual or something. It doesn't spray quite as well. And then all of a sudden, bloop. GG. Ruined.
Maddox subscribing with Prime, also asking, do you spray contrast or speed paint? Absolutely, yeah. All that stuff's fair game. It's like an ink, basically. And so I, uh, I, uh, I airbrushed on these guys. Uh, Express has a lot of blue colors. Here, let me show you. Uh, I've even, I was even testing some of my hand before the stream. Um, but these are all different blue, uh, either washes, inks, exclusive, ex expressly inks. So here's a wash, um, or express paints. There's an ink. Um, and these are all express colors. It's got a lot of, a lot of pretty blue colors and they are a little bit different. The inks are glossier, which I did appreciate. Um, so yeah. Dry tips, Scott's hair, or an airbrush reference? <laughs> Dude, yeah, the dry tips. It's not bleach tips, they're dry tips. I love that. Hope John added an acrylic seasoning section. Couldn't resist anymore. No longer has clean, no longer has to clean his airbrushes in his mouth to get that sweet, sweet paint flavor. Yeah, I just spray right in my mouth. Just, just blast it in there. Wait, there are sub ranges. It's not, they're not sub ranges necessarily, because you'll notice. The font's the same, so it's a little tricky. You'll notice it says game color instead of express color. It is confusing because it's like there are a bunch of things. There's like there's like fluo, there's special effect, there's ink, there's wash, and they're all part of the game color range. And then there's express color uses a very similar uh, label. One's red, one's orange, though. So there is there is a little bit of branding difference. Yeah, as a thought, I'm with you. I think it's just because I hate change. You don't like the branding? Feels a little sci fi y. I mean, the old school Vallejo branding is very much old school scale modeler. You know, it looks. In the same vein as like Tamiya's labeling and stuff. High contrast text and that's all you get. But yeah. Yeah, Tiger's Eyes got it. Their marketing has gone from the 50s to the 90s. The new ones very much feel 90s to me. That's a good way to, that's a good way to say it. Give me my goblin green, damn it. Daddy Bibbs, he is currently using an Awada HPBH. Biz. Ah, shit. Got a little too much brown all over the tunic, but that's okay. Cause it will eventually be black. And a little bit of brown, not that big of a deal. What's the tip size? I don't know, whatever the default tip size for an Awada HPBH is. I think it's point 0.2. Point two, okay. Yeah. There's so many of these guys. Okay, it's the last one. Wait, I didn't do the axe handle. I knew that was too fast. Uh, I just bought the portable air brush compressor that John had in the video, that battery powered one. Haven't had a chance to try it yet, but it'll be my first time airbrushing. Anyone else pick up one of those when he did that video? Anyone else got those battery powered compressors? 
I know a lot of people picked them up because the one that, the specific one that he used sold out on Amazon. Nice. Just like how when he did that first video on the WoW stick, it sold out. And I had to wait. And it made me sad. <laughs> sad. I want my consumer validation now. <laughs> I have one. It's great. I had one for less than a year, and the compressor broke. Worked really well. All right, we're one. We're one. We're we're two and one right now. Or rather, two and three. Yes, Evan. How is your three D printing going? Great. I, uh, let me, let me walk you through all the 3D printing stuff that I did since the last stream. This is either going to be very short or decently long. I, uh, <clears throat> decided that my basement was going to be too cold and I wasn't going to get any successful prints. So I took the 3D printer and I unplugged it and I brought it upstairs to my bedroom that I'm not currently using. And I set it on a table in there. That's it. That's the whole story. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought. Didn't you buy something to deal with the heat I issue? I did. Okay. So what did you what did you buy again? It's um, a little tiny ceramic heater. Uh, no, I didn't even plug it in. I just brought it up there and set it on the desk. Okay, like a little space heater. Um. Yeah. So it's like it's like the components for a little space heater. There's a guide. Um. I'll just link it in chat in a minute here. Uh, figure out where it is were you thinking about building something like an enclosure yeah so what it is is it's this it's one of those the community has come together to make a specific thing it's a little ceramic heater element and you get a specific temperature controller and someone made an stl for a different type of enclosure that you then attach to the lid of your 3d printer on the inside side either with magnets or with double-sided tape or whatever. And then you can regulate the temperature inside the build volume pretty specifically. And it's, you know, it's like a 100 watt heater or something like that. Can we get a picture of this thing or can we get the site pulled up? I want to see it. Sounds yeah, interesting. Uh, give, me, give me one second. All right. If you're looking for an easier solution to keep your FEP or your VAT, sorry, warm, during the winter season, I just bought a brewer's belt, which is a elastic band that you wrap around a keg to keep it warm, to encourage the growth of bacteria for your beer making process. Um, but I wrap it around my vat and the edges of the vat is metal. And so it conducts that heat pretty well and then warms the uh, resin inside. But there is no temp control with that. It's just kind of like you, you put it on and then that, that's it. Get this into my browser capture window. I'm sorry, but it's good to see you struggling a little with the airbrush. Am I struggling right now? I feel like I'm doing okay. I mean, struggling, for, Scott. I'm struggling. I mean, I for us being, I mean, I, I have struggled. I do struggle. That is definitely true. Uh, Oops. For us beginners, with it watching tons of videos and trios in which everything is easy, it's good to see a pro not airbrushing so easily. Gotcha. All right, so this is the Thingiverse file for the actual enclosure. Okay. And what it actually looks like in there it's this little piece on the left, see? It's got a little fan, temperature controller, and the actual heater block is behind it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and so, yeah, you attach it either to, in this case, the, the printer doesn't have quite the normal lid, the full-on lift-off that's become common. But you attach it somewhere in there, it'll specifically regulate the temperature to a very, very, very tight degree. Yeah. So does the does the does the fan come with the device? Yeah. So so the pieces that you buy, 
the fan and the ceramic heater are one thing and then that lcd panel is actually the temperature controller that's a separate purchase the the actual like fan and heater thing is like some sort of you just plug it in and it goes type thing um it's a really chintzy I don't know who would ever buy this type of product that you can find on electronic supports websites and eBay and Amazon and all that stuff. It's like a standard part number. And uh, I don't really know what you would use it for except something like this. So I don't know why it doesn't come with a temperature controller in the first place, but whatever. Okay. I'm out like 20 bucks for all the stuff. So maybe 30. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm following um, Vogman's guide here. I just linked his video in the in the chat. It's a pretty good little video that walks you through all the steps. Yeah, 3D okay. printer adventures. Vogman. Vogman. Sounds like you guys are talking about how to build a rocket ship, and you're just talking about painting toy soldiers. Well, 3D printing toy soldiers, which can get more complicated. Okay, so I tested a bunch of blues, like acrylic ink, transparent blue products. He's um, got the blues. I do, especially after dousing my mouths in liquid plastic. Yeah. Uh, but the one that I think is the right one for me, a dark blue shadow color, is the one that I was using on my skeletons. Fucking Omega Blue. Omega Blue. Man, there was even, there was even more blue shit. I didn't even pull it all out. Okay. I thought that I got this out already. I thought I saw it in my hand. Black Lotus, that's just black, that's not even blue. Um. 62 is shorts weather? You're a psycho. Uh, I agree. 62 is shorts weather. Because 32 is shorts weather. Wait, what? It is definitely not. It will be in March and April. Okay, yeah. Yeah, th 32 in autumn? Probably not shorts weather. <laughs> but 32 in spring? Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Let me show you my knees. That's the wishful thinking and Minnesotans coming out. Yeah. Did I strip all those models and start over? Stripping them, unfortunately, wouldn't really do anything because uh, it's just liquid plastic. It would just stick. It would just stay on there. Anything that would take the resin off or the liquid plastic off, whatever it fucking is. Um, someone mentioned it was resin. I don't know what it is. Um, would likely also damage the models. But I don't know that for a fact. Uh, maybe there's some kind of magic liquid that will solve my problems. What is a good magnifying headband? I'm not entirely sure, you know? Um, they're kind of all, they kind of all function in a very similar way. Yeah, I've, I've bought and tried a few and I think it's mostly you just get what you pay for. Uh, the more expensive ones seem to just have better lenses but are still kind of the same as far as straps are concerned and stuff. The source has a few of the XL hobby ones on the shelf now. And they're fine. Kind of mid-tier. What I will say, because I didn't understand this before I bought one, is that they'll come with different magnifying strengths. Mm -hmm. And those strengths um, will only work at a certain focal range. What I mean by that and there's a certain distance from your head to the model where the image will not be blurry and will be in focus. Like, unlike your eyes, that can adjust automatically getting closer and further. So, buying a kit that has maybe a couple options for different magnifications and different focal lengths in the set so you can kind of get the right one that you need instead of having to go back and forth and find replacements and stuff like that is probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, there are also a couple of kind of standards for designs. So trying to avoid ones that look look cooler and different 
is probably a good idea because you don't want to get, end up in a proprietary lunge system. However, there is a key piece to all this. The real solution, in my opinion, is to just go buy reading glasses. If you don't need to wear wear corrective lenses all the time, um, you know, like I have a mild astigmatism, so I don't wear my glasses most of the time, so I can get away with this. You can just go buy reading glasses at Walmart and get the same effect because that is ultimately what the lenses are, is short focal length uh, medium magnification lenses, and they're in the, roughly the same same power level, you know, 2x, 3x, 3.75, 4.5, that kind of thing. Just adding some shading to this cowl um, that kind of lost a lot of color in the hiding process and also cleaning up some of that brown overspray along the cloak where that's occurring. Concur, I use reading glasses. Interesting. I don't know, Geek Gaming had a couple videos about magnifying glasses or just one, one video. Nearsighted gang, rise up. Right now I am airbrushing Vallejo Express colors and in order to make it really work for me, I use one part of the Express color to one part uh, Reaper MSP Drying Retarder. Um, I like this one the most because it's clear. It doesn't have any like white pigments in it and so it doesn't really color my paint at all, at least while it's still wet. Um, but in case anyone's trying to airbrush this stuff and it's not working for them as smoothly as it is for me, the Drying Retarder is the key. that was a good or a bad holler. It was bad. A little too much dark blue. You can never have too much dark blue, Scott. I'm inclined to agree. All right, that's good enough. I'm, I'm at that stage where I like how it's looking and that always encourages me to continue to like put more paint on the model until it doesn't look good anymore so sometimes you gotta dial it back do you have anything against vallejo's airbrush thinner yeah they okay you fucking made that joke already oh my god <laughs> uh yes Amazing. I was gonna say they kill my mom, but uh, no. I, I, that was the first airbrush thinner that I bought, like a pre-made one. And I was like, oh, it kind of initially solved a lot of my problems I was having with airbrushing at that time. And so from then on, I've always just used pre-made airbrush thinner. I've used Army Painter, I've used Vallejo, I've used now AK Interactive. And if I'm being totally honest, they kind of all work in a similar way, or at least I'm not skilled enough to really detect much of a difference, so. Your mod may vary. What hero do you think is broke AF on Dota, and what do you normally choose to ban? I normally ban Lesh, or Viper, or Razor right now. Those heroes seem all broken as fuck. Viper mostly because he kind of shits on the heroes that I like to play mid a lot, but also because he's good. Yeah, Razor is great right now. <laughs> Uh, 
What, what tips would you give to a new painter starting on Twitch? Probably the same advice that I'd give to a painter starting on YouTube. If you want to make a splash on any social media, you have to be a student of that media. You have to look at all the top dogs on Twitch and like figure out what they're doing right and then like in some ways copy that, but also figure out what they're not doing that you wish they were and then do that or figure out what they're doing that you dislike and don't do that, you know? Really be a student of what, and, and also research this in other areas of YouTube that are more popular and more developed, like in video games, for instance, obviously on Twitch, we're, we're mostly a video game platform here. So what are they doing that's so special? That's getting them uh, viewership. Uh, be a student of Twitch and then apply that to your channel. Cool, cool, cool. Also, from a technical standpoint, lights, lights and sound. The quality of your camera matters less than having enough lights that people can actually see in the camera, right? And if your microphone sounds, oh my God. If your microphone sounds like a big poopy, no one will stick around. How do you say yes in Spanish? I'm assuming it's C, sí, but I feel like you're gonna make some stupid joke now. Here we go. Yeah, Excuse all right, me. it happened. <laughs> Caught it. I can't, can't, can't handle you guys' thought. I need the one final one for 2022. People will tolerate worse video for worse sound. At least that's what is said. It's definitely true. As the sound guy can confirm. Do less. Low back, baby. <laughs> it's nut time. I don't know what that means, but in case you're hanging out in the stream, we're doing a giveaway today at 50 subs for Baratheon Hero Box number three, including the likes of Byron Faring, Dale Seaworth, Dale Seaworth, Patch Face, Justin Macy. Crescent and Stannis Baratheon, mounted Stannis Baratheon. And I actually really like um, Baratheons in uh, A Song of Ice and Fire because they have this like wonderful, like generic knight aesthetic. And so if you're a fan of like low fantasy, like knights, like I am, like King Arthur stuff, like this is, this is the faction for you. Yeah, I agree. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna show you right now. Nut on me! What? Come on, Skibber. Got it's any plans to pay more MCP time. coming up? I don't. I have no plans. The tape! I hate it! All the right. Jolly Painter, subscribing to Tier 1. Thank you, Jolly Painter. Hey, look, it's Stannis on horseback. Hey, look, it's King Arthur. No, it's not King Arthur. Yeah. But... Nice, generic, low fantasy model. Lots of fabrics, lots of nice big volumes. A little hard to see on camera because of the yellow plastic. Let's see if I can pull up a few other ones. Okay, I dropped one on the ground. So if you get this box, it may come with one last guy. I'm sorry. It's gone forever. It's gone forever, oh there he is. Very Bretonian-like, absolutely. 
You know, like this guy, I don't know who he is, but he is a D&D character just waiting to happen. Oh yeah. If you're if you are into D&D, Brathian is the boxes to buy. Yeah. Both for generic troops. Like if you bought the starter, you get a couple heroes that are all usable as characters. And then you get what Sentinels, Wardens and um, Stag Champs, I believe, which are all cool generic soldiers in plate mail or scale mail and they look great as a thought i ain't falling for it bro i I mean if if there is a new character with that name awesome i'm happy i ain't gonna say it out loud though Try for a double in one stream. I got greedy. Yeah, right, you will. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no one believes that. <laughs> I'm a Lannister. I'm a Lannister stand, so I'm just going to get the Stark slash Lannister box and hope I like the play style. I mean, they're great. Uh, Lannister's like a very controlly faction, um, and Stark kind of just seems like they all they kind of just run at you and hit you. Um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty straightforward. Um, also, the two-player starter in this game is like the best deal in miniature war gaming. You heard it here. I, I just it's ridiculous how much you get in that box for the price. Because you can pick that box up depending on the store for between 65 and 80 bucks. What? Yeah. Yeah, that two-player starter is like MSRP of $80. How much? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. It's got eight units in it. How, how much does a normal faction cost? 110. <laughs> They're just losing money. Okay, I get it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That two-player starter is a ridiculously good deal. It is the older sculpt. The new Lannister and Stark starter have better models in them, but who cares? It's so cheap. And it gets you into the game, lets you experiment with it and see, you know, like what the game is about and if you like it. You like playing Lannisters, you buy the two player starter. You go, you know what? I'm gonna get that new starter for the new, new sculpts. Do it. There's no reason not to. Vithio, thanks for the sub. Got mine for 70 bucks. Yeah, I bought mine. I just bought one for Christmas gift. I have this horse during the Black Friday sale and I got it for 60 bucks. After discount. Diggity damn. Yeah, 62, I think is what it is. Give the Lannisters to a friend of mine because I already have Lannisters and I'm using the Starks to get my Stark army. Streamlabs, fix your sub goal. Why do I have to run this manually? Is uh is Stream Labels the application running? Yes. It oh. also doesn't use that for this. I'm out of ideas. Yeah. No, it's just two times in the last eight streams, it's just decided that it's like it's not connected to Twitch right now. Sorry. And some color and some contrast back into that shawl. Lightning fast speeds. Mike Genie is correct. Bozo the Clown only comes in the two-player starter as well. Bozo the Clown? <laughs> there's, a, there's a specific sculpt with the Mountain's Men, one of the four sculpts. That his hair is just straight up like a clown wig. It's ridiculous. <laughs> See you, Forest Wizard.
don't know if this Weird is the right Bird, color. subscribing with Prime five months in a row. Woo! Boom, just finishing, finished listening to Mastodon, and now I'm here. Will I see you at Adepticon? Absolutely. I love to go at Adepticon. Try to go every year that I can. Okay, patience. Wasn't getting the, the paint out, the airbrush in the way that it always comes out. So just take a moment, clean that tip off. Coming over for Warhammer Fest? Nah, probably not this time. Just too, uh, it's too close to Adepticon. I don't need to do that many cons that, that soon after one another. If that makes sense. Some pretty nasty overspray. I forgot to deal with it in the last mall that I just airbrushed here. And now we're good. I will say my regret at not ordering Silent Smith. There's one thing. They're hella cool looking. They are. The masks, the segmented armor, the big axes. They're like big old executioners. All right. I think that's it for all the airbrushing steps on my silenced men. And now we're going to get into some brush painting. Throw me in, throw me in the draw for the Baratheon set, please, dudes, and I will love you forever. The only thing you gotta do to get in the draw for the Baratheon paint is just gotta be here. You gotta be a viewer of the channel. Sorry, you gotta be a follower of the channel, which doesn't cost you anything. And also, of course, you gotta be here when the giveaway is going on. Yeah, we're Twitch partners, so we always have transcoding. That is true. Ah. Damn it, there was one more fuck it out. Okay. <laughs> I hate when that happens. I know, I just fucking dumped everything out of my airbrush. Oh All right. my god. Let's try again. A every time I'm doing any sort of batch painting, I'll be going through the next step and I'll be like, oh, I guess I missed this one for this. You know, I, I painted like 24 uh, yeah, Sworn yeah. Brothers and it's just like, oh, I painted 23 of their scabbards. Oops. <sighs> adding insult to injury that uh it's the fucking airbrush step two common struggle you're on turbo i'm on turbo so it'll be 20 minutes what's turbo let's do a little mixy mixy All right, where's that last one? There he is, you little dingus. Uh, no, Mike Genie, the drug in the Dread movie is slow-mo. Oh yeah, you got there. Easy peasy. Done. I think. Turbo is what Scott calls Whippet, so he can feel like he lives in the future. Absolutely. 
Seeking a little advice, would like to start using speed paints or contrast paints. What would you recommend as a starting pack? Does Citadel have one? Does Vallejo or the guy that used to paint for Games Workshop? I know Iron Painter has a pack. What would you recommend? I'm pretty liquid, so cash isn't a huge blocker, but I only paint occasionally. Hmm. Um, I think the best person to ask that question to is Juan Hidalgo. He had an AMA on the Reddit, the subreddit, the mini painting subreddit recently, and that was one of the questions. And he broke down all the differences between them pretty succinctly in a text post. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they all broke out, but I think the one, the one that sounded the most positive to me was actually Army Painters, which was surprising because he helped develop the Vallejo one and he also kind of was notorious for shitting on the Iron Painter one. Uh, so I can't remember. But if someone can find that AMA. I already did. All right. From November. Boom, there it is. I think one of the questions asked about comparing them. And this is this is the guy to ask that question to, not necessarily me. I've been, I've been fooling around. But uh, regarding the sets, uh, GW does not make a set of paint other than like a beginner set, and it doesn't include contrast, as far as I'm aware. You're right, Armor Painter has one, and I don't think Vallejo Express does yet, because it's just coming out to the market right now, so they don't have like a bunch of convenient packaging for it. Did you find that box of hot pink paints? I did indeed. Smoking 23 EDSA. Thank you for this prime sub for 18 months, god damn. Did you already discuss the GSW drama? No, I didn't. I was uh, I was keeping it for the news section for the podcast, but since it came up, let's talk about the drama. Um, so yes, Mike Genie, you are right. Let's take a moment here and talk about this drama. Fuck you, compressor. I'm talking. Okay. Um, Mike Genie hitting the nail on the head here. GSW has been involved in drama before. And just to recap very briefly, there's a small YouTube channel called Sword and Steel. She made a video talking about Vallejo's color shift paints. And oh, yeah, I remember that. GSW, in their infinite wisdom, was like, Vallejo is stealing our idea for color shift paints. They had the... Uh, our totally original, never done before idea. Exactly. And they're like, and the way the copyright works is I believe it's like, it's like landlocked. So because Vallejo is another Spanish company, they're like, okay, we're going to take them down. But we're going to do it <laughs> by... Copyright striking this YouTuber who's reviewing the product. <laughs> I don't know who made that choice, but it was dumb. And so that got him some heat. <coughs> now the new thing that got him some heat is this. There is a small Instagrammer. I think his name was Dan something. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Uh, damn it. I hate it when Instagram does that thing where it's like, here's the thing you want to see. And then it's gone. Um, it's, I can, oh, it's, it's DRN underscore paints. He painted a Mindwork Games bust. Um, and recently, GSW has started selling uh, both Mindwork Games busts and also Ignis Art busts. And um, they decided to use this random Instagrammer's uh, paint job as the box art on their website. Oh yeah, okay. okay, I did see this earlier. Not a huge deal so far, okay. Not, you should ask permission, they didn't do that, whatever, okay. The artist asked them, can you please take that down? I would rather you not use it. And instead of taking it down, they recolored it in Photoshop, removed his watermark and changed the background. And the, the fucking icing on the cake of this whole situation is that on every single product, that they have, or at least all the models, it says stop piracy in miniature wargaming or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it's like you are actively stealing and like hiding someone else's work. It's so sad. I talked to Mateo, the owner of Mindwork Games, about this because I was kind of curious are other painters getting their stuff like taken without asking? And so far, Mateo was like, no, this is, we don't know why they didn't use our box arts for these things. Like they have our permission to do that. Um, we're not really involved in this. So, so far it seems like it's only this singular case that uh, it's occurring in. Uh, green stuff world, totally. Green totes. stuff world, yes. Um, isn't that hilarious though? I love I love the uh, the stop pirating in, in miniature painting uh, like badge they have on their products. It's so fucking actually Listen, piracy ironic. is wrong and it's bad when other people do it. Yes, when, yes, exactly. 
We are above the law, though. Because see, they're not they're not making miniatures or something. I don't, I don't even know what the deal is yeah. with that company. It just seems like they want to run headlong into walls. <laughs> There was Golden Demon Compendium drama too. There was, I don't know what the deal was, but apparently there was a painter who didn't want his stuff on the Golden Demon Compendium, which is totally fine. It's a free service. That guy does it out of the, out of the love he has in his heart for Golden Demon, which basically is just cataloging all the Golden Demon winners and stuff like that. Um, and he took that person's model down uh, after their request, but then mysteriously, he was like, I'm gonna take a break from doing the Golden Demon Compendium. And he's been doing it for a long time. So I'm really curious what happened. Do you guys know? It's sad he's taking all the old stuff on his Insta, really? Oh no. Can't you use green stuff to copy molds? Seems on brand, lol, nice. What, what was the deal with that? I don't know enough about it to weigh in. Uh... Uh, does he sell books? I believe he had a Kickstarter where he sold books, yes. He was actually the one that I spoke to about fulfillment of being like a, what's the word? It's like a, a, it's like one of those parts of the campaign that kind of sneaks up on you in terms of being like an area where you could lose money uh, due to like damaging and chipping. Fulfillment? Fulfillment, yeah. Golden Demon Company is one from Cult of Paint. It isn't, but he's like friends with them. He's a great guy, by the way. Yeah, he, oh, he's in the podcast. Nice, okay, okay. Okay. We are all clean with the airbrush. There are no more surprise silenced men hanging around. And now we will start the painting. I have to drop into a work call. How long until the drawing? Well, there's a little meter on the bottom there that shows how far we have to go to get 50 subs, which is when the drawing starts. Yeah, we need another 38 right now, so. Right. So I can't say when it's gonna happen, but maybe oh, sorry, I'd... no, I haven't updated this. We need another 36 right now. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, I, it may not even happen in this stream, if I'm being totally honest, if we don't get the subs for it. But if, uh, if we do, if we don't get it, we'll continue it next stream. Uh, so next Tuesday, uh, during the painting stream, we will do the giveaway and we won't reset the sub goal. We'll just keep it where it's at at the end of the stream and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, I will tell you though, we've got other stuff to give away here. So once we hit this giveaway, we've got a whole nother one to go. We have so many things to give away. We yes. do. And not just our, you know, non-specific generalized love for our fan base. <laughs> but that too, you know. Yeah. Captain Howdy, thanks for the prime sub. I'm gonna go add some uh, water to my very barren wet palette here. Oh, jeez. Just got back in a warmer. Thought I wanted to do some orcs, but I'm hating painting them. Any advice? Paint something that you have fun painting. Yeah. <laughs> or or don't paint them. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a painting channel, and we do advocate painting. But if you don't like painting, you know, it is what it is. It's not for everybody. Yeah, that's a fair thing. I mean, that is the question. Uh, Emperor Slime says, what do you hate about them? Is it that you have to paint them green? Because you don't, you can paint them whatever color you want. Do they have to paint a lot of flesh? Yeah. Maybe it's time to buy Space Marines then. No! <laughs> don't do it to yourself. Dark Elder have little skin and they got a lot of armor. Well, some of them do. Too many little details. Ah, oh, that's a common complaint oh, these days. You wanna, yeah, play a song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know what doesn't have too many little details? Space Marines. Kind of true. Good volumes. You're painting the rank and file regular troops. You don't have to deal with too much biggity bullshit all of them. Kind of true. They like intentionally create a problem with their own range yeah. and then solve it with Space Marines just to encourage more sales. That's that's it. That's the, the that, secret. The bastards. Yeah. Um, no, I can feel that because, yeah, orcs have like all kinds of 
little details, bandoliers, all that kind of stuff. That's cool. true. You know, Adam did just have a video on, like, just don't worry about the details that much. Yeah. Um, and that also comes down to what you're looking to get out of the painting. Not everyone wants to have super insane high quality miniatures on the table. Some people just want them to look, yeah, they've got colors on them. Let's just play. Yep. And anywhere in between. Yep, yep, yep. Very true. Okay, so I was messing around with some various transparent paints, and I found a brown one that I really enjoyed from, I think, Vallejo Express Colors, and I want to try that from the pants today. It looked similar to what I had done on my test model, which is a, that's a win for me. So let's see if we can find that one. Uh, I thought I kept it out. Scott's a very organized person. I am. As my wife can attest to. <laughs> I don't know why if I used it and I was like, oh, hey, this is nice. Oh, wait, is this it? Actually, you know what? It wasn't an express paint. It was a instant paint. Oh, okay. I don't know what the difference is. Are uh, the express colors out now? Not quite. I think they showed up on order sheets from distributors though. Which is, I mean, those first preview videos that went up on Juan's channel, he was like, it's a year away. But that was not a year ago. So maybe they're coming out later. Maybe they're coming out sooner. Also, Bell has a bow subscribing with Prime and Mondo Gibbs subscribing with Prime. Hey, thanks for the subs, guys. Mondo says, hello, need help painting Jade. Other color, other color than green, if able, as I have a hard time being red, green, color deficient. Other color than green, if able, as I have a hard time being red, green. You want to paint Jade, but you don't want to use green or red. So it looks like the solution here is blue. I mean, Jade can come in purple, blue, off-white, red, green, minty, and gray. So so what's the real question here? What do you, what do you need help with exactly? Just like a, a way to interpret it, a specific color to use, a process? What do you think? Um, here, get me back on that painting cam. Let's try out this paint together and see what it looks like. So, um, the straps and all the belts and things will kind of stay this sandy color, and the boots themselves, the what I think is the pants peeking through these straps, and then the larger pants up here are gonna turn this dark brown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out with painting Jade real quick here. Hang on. Paint it whatever color you want, and however you want, Scott, if you look at, uh, the stream, you'll understand. Colors of jade. It literally comes in like every color, translucence and texture. So if you want it to read as jade, just tell people that whatever you've painted is jade and they can't argue with you. I mean, that is true, but also like- Big brain. What, it, what do you think of when you think of the color jade? That's fair. I mean, I think of green, but he says other than green, so. Hmm. I mean, it's still gonna, it's gonna have gem-like qualities, right? It's a, it's a stone. So you've got two approaches you could take. You can do the, um, I, I'm going to paint it gloss, you know, with a very, very high gloss color. And it'll read like a polished stone because that's what you get out of the paint. Or... You do the, I'm doing manual highlights like gems with, you know, really, really sparkling edges and so on. Is the problem that Mondo Gibbs just wants a really shiny paint that's like glossy and pretty? Oh, maybe. Because if that's the case, let me introduce you to a little color I like to call Tamiya Clear. Um, there's blue and there's green in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, I 
Okay, we're gonna hit this with a dryer and then maybe we'll do another different brown color. There's so many freaking different brown contrast paint colors. Brown. It's incredible. Um, so I'll dry this one off and then maybe we'll do like another one so we can kind of compare the two different browns and see like what we, what we like in terms of matteness, in terms of color, in terms of how it's covering, etc. All right, here we go. Hair dryer. Yep. Looks pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm really a, a digging the ratio of like how the finish of this this stuff. It, it it's like not too matte. It's not too satin. It's like right in the middle, and I like the brown color a lot. I think it looks really good. I think I need to like maybe do like a highlight on it, but otherwise this is this is looking done for me at least. I'm comparing the uh, completed model I have to um, the uh, one I'm currently working on right now. And maybe you can see it too if Evan will show you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give him as many hints as I could. Um, but yeah, like that's not too far away from that warm brown color. It's not too glossy. It isn't like awkwardly glossy, like in the recesses and then not elsewhere. It's just flat. It's it's flat in terms of the finish is the same all over the brown. Um, I don't know. That was pretty satisfying. I feel like I want to try other contrast like products for posterity, but I feel like what's the point? I'm happy with that. Looks brutal. I dig it. Thank you. So apparently the Green Stuff World Instagram drama is even worse than we thought after being called out for using Instagram posts without permission, although they do credit. Yes. Uh, yes. So I thought we did mention that, but I did leave out that one last detail that you just said, where in the the product description, it says painted by the GSW team. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So that, that makes it even worse. You made this? Yeah. I made, I made this. <laughs> Stop piracy, Scott. Stop it. Uh. Chad, I have a question for you. What what really qualifies as piracy in the modern age? Is piracy making a illegal copy of something without destroying the original? Or is piracy actively taking someone else's stuff and then claiming it as your own as if you invaded their ship and took their stuff and said, this is my boat now? I'm the captain. I'm the captain. You know what? I don't have a lot of express colors. That's okay, though. All right. I know there are a couple browns in the GW range, but the one Wildwood is fucking way too dark. Way too dark. Um, and the other ones are too warm, I think. You know what? Fuck it. We'll just stick with the thing that works. Can we get links to chat, please? You know, I have tried in the past the like allow command to allow someone to post a link and it never works. <laughs> so the answer to that question is apparently no. Mouflon of death, first time chat. Piracy is always morally correct. The hot takes. And I appreciate that for my movie going habits, but uh, I'm not sure if I agree otherwise. Oh, uh, not necessarily drama, but news. I don't know if you guys saw that uh, 
Um, recent Slayer Sword winning Gavin Garza is now a member of the heavy metal team. Smadex, thanks for the five gifted subs. I appreciate it. Man. Really? Um, yes. Really. Uh, so he's moving to England from Texas beyond the old heavy metal team. But uh, yeah, shout out to Smatix for the gifted subs. If you got a gifted sub from Smatix, make sure to thank him in the chat. And if you got a gifted sub from Smatix, you get access to the Miniac Discord. Woo! Just make sure that your Twitch account and your Discord account are linked. And you're in, baby. Let's see pictures of the cat. You're in like sin. In like sin? You get access to the... Uh... The Almighty Pets channel. I had heard that he was the one that asked to have his art taken off of the compendium. Really? But, but I do not know that for a fact. Okay. I just, that was, that was one of the things that I read out there in the ether when I was trying to figure out what the hell was happening last week. Okay. Good for that guy. What's the average salary of an A? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, it's actually really easy to find. Not I mean, not easy to find out necessarily, but it's easy to um, just check because they list the the salary on the uh, the job request on the website. And back in whenever I was a junior in college or a senior in college, so what what is this like? Fucking eight years ago. Eight years Nine ago? Years ago? Is that sound right? I worked at Crate for like three years, and then I did YouTube for... I'm on my seventh year now on YouTube in January. So about 10 years ago? Yeah. I'm 30. Yeah, I graduated. You graduated like 21, something like that. Um, You graduated at 21? Well, no, I didn't, but... I was going to say, are you some sort of overachiever, Scott? No. That's not... No, not at all. <laughs> um, fucking A. What was I going to say, though? Um... I looked up the salary because I was trying to apply for a job. There was an opening when I was like a senior or a junior in college. And at that point, it was like 16 to 18,000 pounds a year. That's it. So, yeah, that was it. That's rough, buddy. For a junior heavy metal painter. Ugh. So not a full one. And it's still a full-time job, though. Um, so I got to imagine it can't be more than 25 20? I don't know. So that was a long time ago, though. So maybe, maybe it's different now. Yeah, I remember reading it and being like, that was terrible. Oh, hey. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this is, the, this is El Chefe Bon. Uh, I was like, El Chefe Bon. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. You ran into that wall. I did. I did. Listen, all lowercase names should be banned. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, thank you for the gifted subs. Really appreciate that. El Chef est bon. Uh, if you got a sub from the chef himself, make sure to thank him in the chat. Also, Athoth uh, says that it was Chris Clayton who didn't want his stuff on the internet. Um, you got a source for that, Mr. Athoth? Send it to me in the Discord. I have. Uh, I just want to put it. If, it, if that's true, I'll, I'll mention it in the podcast. But I just need a source. That would have been minimum wage back then. Yeah, it wasn't great. As a junior heavy metal painter, you get to lick the brushes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they only pay store managers thirty k. <laughs> Fucking a, bro. No wonder my. Uh, the store manager of my local store back home has to fucking do commission paint jobs while he is like working. That is just, that is so pathetic. Yeah, I, I kind of hate everything about that gig, but there is the one other piece to it, which is because so many of them are solo stores. I mean, if you, if you don't like working with other people, that seems like actually a pretty good gig. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, you have to manage the inventory and stuff, but that's not that's not a huge undertaking. Are you for, are you saying that they are uh, they know that's a value of the job and thus are charge are paying less? Yeah. Really? Wow. Okay. I think so. Interesting. 
That is a, a interesting take. Yeah, exactly. As a thought, uh, it is my understanding that all all of the U.S. locations are one man stores. Yes. Um, except except the location in Texas, and I think there was one other one that had a second part time helper, but that might not be true anymore. You can also steal whatever you want before for several months without getting caught. <laughs> before you get caught, nice. Uh, okay, I got a little Discord notification, so I'm assuming that Azathoth Boop -boop. pinged me a little sourcey source. Oh, I've got a relevant link to the Jade discussion earlier first. Okay. I just saw that. I will become you for a moment and see if that's what you got. I don't see it. Oh, okay. He's saying he's trying to find new ones. Gotcha. All right. Appreciate it. As a thought, thank you for doing my journalistic duties. Yeah. Um, all of the stuff I was looking at about this also is gone now. There hasn't been a lot of discussion on this on like the mini painting subreddit or whatever because they're, I don't know, too busy actually painting minis. Possibly, possibly. I could just ask the guy who runs the compendium. I don't know if he's going to tell me, though. Because we're, uh, we're acquaintances. He might tell me. Or he might not. You might say that Scott's a guy that knows a guy. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to, uh... Have that person come under the limelight. Stir up a bunch of drama? Yeah. Which I'm not trying to stir up drama. I'm just trying to report on the, the news in a small way. There's not much news in the miniature painting hobby, so small things like this are of nominal interest. Well, you can either report the news or you can make the news, Scott. Yeah. I heard about a gigantic miniature painting related leak. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know much about it. it sounds like fake news. Probably. <laughs> I'm going to start a GW truck, like Kona Ice, but slinging plastic at people with retail addictions. <laughs> like the Snap-on guy. Sign people up for lines of credit for painting tools and models they can't afford and tour hobby shops. Nice. The only source I knew was that of that said it was Chris Clayton what in the original IG post comment section which of course got scrubbed yeah because you delete the post and all the comments go away with it oh did he delete the post um his Instagram is gone it really the whole compendium is... I just I just tried to go on there and it's like the account exists but it just has no posts reels tagged oh no it still shows up with tag but no posts no reels and the avatar is gone. Too. What happened, bro? Surely Chris Clayton politely asking him to take his models off of the compendium was not enough to delete the whole goddamn page. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just Instagram being garbage. Okay. Who knows? Um, can you see if a little old website called demonwinner.fr is still alive and kicking? Dot fr yeah a little french site is that still up um unless i if i typed it wrong then that's my fault but currently not finding it hang on uh oh okay demon winner dot free dot fr oh is that what it is yeah okay and uh it's still here and still looks like um a website out of 2002 yeah yeah News, last post to news, February 13th, 2008. <laughs> At first, I thought these two were related, like this website and also the Gold Demon Compendium. I found out later that they weren't uh, exactly related, um, but at least that's still a source for Golden Demon winning stuff if you uh, are interested in that. 
Just checked, and the GDC Discord is gone now, too? God damn, well, I'm so curious. The gossiper in me wants to know what happened. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, my, my inclination is that it was not a polite conversation, but... No, it must not have been. Who knows? <laughs> Dr. Rhino wants to know, Scott... Can you tell why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? <laughs> uh, I can't remember any of the ads off the top of my head, so I can't riff on this joke. But I know that I appreciate it. Is it like, is it for that cinnamon flavor? They kind of just like repeat all of the uh, the selling points of Cinnamon Toast Crunch in those questions. I mean, that's how it works, right? Right, yeah. You gotta, gotta instantiate that brand identity directly into your brain. You do. Just you gotta, like how you apply head on directly to the forehead. <laughs> or how you, you know, just keep repeating a thesis while you're like writing a paper. You, you gotta, people forget stuff, you know? So you just gotta keep saying it over and over again. My speculation would be that he was probably getting flack for a while, and this was the latest request. Oh, this latest request pushed him over the edge. Getting flack seems like an overstatement. Brawlwater says, drama is fun when you are involved and the stakes are small. It's very fucking true. Yeah. Um, how bad is airbrushing without the hood? Uh, I guess it, it really depends on how much you airbrush. If you airbrush a lot, um, it's going to be a problem. If you don't airbrush a lot, then it will not be a problem. Ooh, Board Chili has a classic one. Hey, Scott, when you go to start painting a mini and notice a mold line you missed, what do you do? I always seem to miss a few when I clean song models. You can choose to care or not care. Yeah, that is the answer. Is do you do what you have to do, which is scrape off that paint and fix the mold line in that area? Or do you just pretend it's not there? It kind of depends on the situation. Like there are definitely some mold lines that I missed on these guys. Um, and I'm only able to find that after I like zenithly highlighted it. And in a situation where the model was like simply base coated, I wouldn't I wouldn't really have a problem um, scraping it off because applying a, a base coat again of that paint is, is trivial. But in this situation where there's kind of like a nice airbrush blend, it gets a little dicier, uh, yeah. a little bit harder to replicate that surface. I, I also am of the standpoint that not all models are worth cleaning and I don't clean my song minis generally. Unless there's something really egregious like the kind of flashing that's like a full-on overhang rather than just a mold line. It's just, I like song minis fine, but I don't think they're worth that kind of effort most of the time. Maybe the heroes, you know, like your heroes boxes and your leaders and stuff, but for all the units of guys and stuff, personally, I think that they are not good enough to merit that unless you're really, really looking for a top tier force. And most of them honestly don't need that much cleanup anyway. That is true. I did clean up these uh, silence men and the drown men, but obviously did not do a good enough job. Here's what I'll say. If you're cleaning the models, you should go through them. Um, like every every unit has three of the same pose because they're 12 man units. Some even have a little bit more because they have like a kind of a unit champion style model. Um, and I would clean the same model three times in a row because you'll get used to cleaning it over those three models and you'll sometimes catch mold lines on the second or third one and then go back to the first or second one to fix the ones you've missed prior. Um, that's what I did for, for my for my silence men and that worked uh, kind of. My voice is like if leather and butter had a baby. Well, I'll tell you what, I think it's more like if something made of leather wanted to eat a bunch of butter. And then you made that into a voice. Um, yeah. So, so I would say of my song minis, I, 
Just I, I have cleaned probably about 10 of them total. Moving on. Oh, my God. Uh, Ron Robbins subscribing with Prime three months in a row. Hey. And hey, if you don't know, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. And you can give us a little bit of free money. Mm. We appreciate that free money. Also, right now, we're giving away Baratheon Heroes Box 3. Well, not right now, right now. Right but now. When we when we reach our sub goal, which is coming soon, 23 more subs and we're giving away Baratheon Heroes 3. And here are the two two of the six heroes in that box right here, right now. Um, El Jefe Bon gifted a sub to Doc Rhino. Hey. Uh, which is pretty sweet, pretty sweet. I'd like to see those gifted subs. That sucks to hear, Azathoth. Yeah. I just can't be arsed to play a game where I'll need to paint more than 15 minis. Hey, that's fair. You definitely got to paint more than that in Song of Ice and Fire. Well, if you're going to paint them. That's true. This now, is one of the keys to Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, I like painting my armies. Scott likes painting his armies, theoretically. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> uh, but song does not require it. Plastic's colored. There are no rules at competition requiring you to have a painted army. Uh, one one of the big advantages to the game, because they're pre-assembled models, is that you can come in on song night and be like, hey, this is really cool, and just buy a box and pull it out and start playing with it. Yeah, that is honestly, that can't be understated. It's amazing. It's so nice. It's so cool. Oh, the new... The new Martell releases, they came out on Friday. If you wanted to play a game on Friday with the new Martell releases, you could do that. As opposed to having to take home the new boxes and assemble them. And yeah, you could paint it, play with them unpainted, but you're going to get shit from your friends and Warhammer or whatever if you do that. But song? No, no problem, dude. Oh, cool. You want to play with those Starfall Outriders? Sweet. Buy them and let's play. This is very true. It's also true in Guild Ball. Toward the end of its uh, uh, age, it uh, had plastic uh, colored miniatures because, and it came with everything you need to play the game. You just buy it, and that's all you need. Ready to rock. Huddleston, <coughs> that's just not true. Um, there's actually a pretty vibrant song community in Indiana because. Uh, Brett Lamfer's group is outside of Indianapolis. Oh, right. Yeah. Indiana. Actually, is it Ohio? Where was the Nationals for the U.S. held before? That was, that was, was Indianapolis because it was at Gen Con. Okay. Where is uh, Sunday Slaughter and all those guys? Uh, they are in Ohio, oh. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But uh, Brett, Brett's in uh, Indiana? Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Okay. Nice. What up, Death Glory Pete? There's no one that plays war games in Indiana. That's fair. That's fair. That I can't attest to, Poor Chili. I don't know if there's a lot of song being played in Florida or not. I know that there's a community in both the Carolinas. And uh, Alabama and Tennessee. The solution here, Huddleston and Board Chili, is just to move to Minnesota. I mean, I agree with that. Everyone should come here because Minnesota is the best. And you can tell Minnesota is the best because starting tomorrow night and for the next two days afterwards, we're going to have a winter storm that is not compatible with human life. <laughs> I don't think that that's the exact tagline that uh, huh. Noah used, but it was pretty close. Sometimes it's hard to tell 
on these legs? What are straps and what are pants? Let's check. Just default to assuming it's all straps. Okay. Like uh, belt man. Belt man. Batman's alter ego. The kinkier version of Batman. Definitely. Definitely a kinkier version. You can always start a local group. It's very true. You can always be the person who comes in with two armies, teaches someone the game, and then it slowly grows over time. That's true. It's basically how our song group started. I will also accept I will also accept an offer letter at Leader Games. There you go. That's how you get to Minnesota. Join one of our many indie game developers. Or not. I mean, indie. there's a bunch of people that work for game companies that aren't even located here. Yeah, but I that live here. A lot of fantasy flight people. Is that what you're saying? Because I mean, they're well, kind of fantasy flights here. located here. But I mean, like WizKids. Ah. Uh, um, John and Alex both work for WizKids, but they're not headquartered here. Yeah. Asmodee North America's uh, headquartered in Minnesota, and well, uh, everyone who's ever worked with Asmodee in a professional capacity has only good things to say about them. Only good things. The best things. Uh, most people that work for them seem pretty happy. And I know quite a few people that work there. So, Cornflake Justice, the Netrunner Miniatures game, is called Cyberpunk Red. Since the Netrunner is the Cyberpunk card game after they lost the license for Cyberpunk. <laughs> this is true? Yes. I mean, that is quite literally true. Is that runner used Scott to be the this? cyberpunk card game? Did Scott tell you this? Uh, yes. Nice. You would know. Also, when is that becoming a thing? Which thing? Uh, the the Netrunner miniature game. Oh, no, no, no. The, the, so the Cyberpunk War Game is a thing. It's, uh, what's the name of that company? Monster Fight Club. Oh. Um, I don't think it's officially fully out yet. Maybe it is. They were kind of previewing it around Gen Con. Uh, Scott just downloaded the rules and printed them out and stuff. We're going to play it at some point soon here. Oh, cool. Because it uses the same minis from the Cyberpunk role-playing game. Okay. Uh, and then there are some additional ones that are kind of more like rank and file gang members and stuff. Um, is it Mantic? I don't know. Uh, it's okay. someone. Anyway, uh, my favorite thing that I have, my, my understanding of the rules is that for measurements, um, if you can bend your ruler around an obstruction, you have line of sight. I don't know about that. The idea being that like smart weapons and stuff let you shoot around cover a little bit. So there are rulers that the game produces that you need to use because there are a certain kind of elasticity. I I don't have a good answer to that part. Okay. That's an interesting idea. It is a little annoying that you you probably would have to buy whatever ruler they made for the game because you can never guarantee that one is the same as the other. I smell a lot of broken rulers. <laughs> what's uh, what's Mantix called? Is it called, are you talking about Drop Zone Commander or something like that? Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone is the name of the upcoming uh, war game. Okay, okay. They have flexible rulers or like garment measuring tape. Yeah, I know. But like they're all like, I mean, even a metal tape measure is like flexible to a certain degree. You don't, you don't need to buy the ones that have like a wire arbiter inside of them for them to be bendy. Every tailor is like, fuck, yes, finally I have the edge. <laughs> it's like the, the more flexible a ruler you buy, the better off you are in that game. 
Surely that is not how it works. Um, okay, we did a we did a contrast step here with some scale seventy five. What is it called? Werewolf brown instant paint. All right, let's uh, let's continue on here. We're gonna paint the tunic now with some black. Gonna paint the tunic. Or whatever the fuck it is. Who knows what it is. All right, y'all, let me know down in the description. Description, this is not YouTube. Let me, let me know in the chat. <laughs> yeah, they don't even have control over the description. No, nope, they don't. Let me know in the chat what game you're playing right now. What's your what's your what's your go-to game? Also, if you're not playing games because you're just a painter, say I'm not playing games. I'm just a painter. In whatever way you want to say. Chat, should I buy the Scale Artist Range or Chimera with my Christmas bonus money? I think you should buy the. Uh, what's the right answer? <laughs> my brain, my brain is so slow. Uh, chi chimera, Chimera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you definitely use Chimera more than you use Scale Color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't even have the artist range, so I guess I can't really, uh, say. AOS, 40k, Hellboy, Infinity, MCP, 40k, EverQuest, you sneaky little git. Uh, are we throwing out Cyberpunk TT war games we've heard of? Because I follow one on the gram called Human Interface. Looks pretty awesome, I've never played it. Okay, okay. Uh, 40k, Infinity, Midnight Suns. I'm guessing this is, uh, MCP. Kill Team. AOS, mostly a painter. Vampire Survivors, never heard of that one. Uh, I have, but I didn't realize anyone actually played it. <laughs> Underworlds, Oathsworn, shout out to Oathsworn. Wasteland Express Delivery Service. I'm mostly paid by a fully intended on playing Kill Team someday. Wish I knew how to play 40K. Better wait till 10th. <laughs> you're gonna say, you're gonna say. Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. Hey. That's been picking up at the store. They've had like four or five players the last a uh, couple weeks that I've been out there and bumped right. into them. Nice. So. We've, okay, I've gotten three messages about Vampire Survivors, okay? I need to... It's a video game. It's a... Oh, what the It's fuck? like an idle game. Come almost. on, guys. Yeah. You tricked me again. Uh, hoping to play some Mordheim, Frostgrave. Okay, some Dark Tide. Kill team game scheduled. Minecraft. Um, CMON has a Kickstarter on Cyberpunk board game called Cyberpunk 2077 Gangs of Night City. Yes, of course they do. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that Kickstarter ended and didn't do as well as they were hoping. Mm. Mycelium Vane says KDM and Descent 3. How do you like uh, Descent 3? My, my board game group is going to play one game for fun. Valheim. I've been playing a lot of Valheim. Okay, I meant miniature war games, guys. Yeah. But I guess we're we're gamers of all types here. Gamers, gaming, gamers. Gamers. Xbox. Call of Duty, etc. Okay. I don't know if this is gonna result in this tunic looking like much of anything, but we're gonna try. You know, you know what is funny? What's that? I'm looking at this uh, Kickstarter for the cyberpunk board game that Simon did. Yeah. And they really, they mistimed it. Cause this, this Kickstarter was December of, uh, no, no, not December, excuse me. Kickstarter, why is your website bad? Oh, uh, man. I just want to see when this was started. I would also love to know the answer to that question, though. <laughs> Fucking yeah. Kickstarter. Aeon Trespass Odyssey. When doesn't Simon have a board game on Kickstarter? I would say at most times during the year, they probably do. They, they do. Probably, what, they put out four a year? One a quarter? Is that what they do? I think maybe even more than that, but... So, so they put this up, and then I, I think this was right around Gen Con. Uh, it was sometime in the middle of the summer and did not do that well for one of their games, right? It, they raised about $886,000, which, you know, is decent, but I think that their numbers that they want to be pulling are more like, you know, 5, 10 mil um, on their Kickstarters. 
Probably not that much, but maybe like more like one to three million. But feel free to go check the numbers. I think their first copy of Zombicide did really well, but I think the future ones not. Well, like Zombicide Invader raised like 3.5 million. Nice. Uh, anyway, if they had done that Kickstarter after Edge Runners came out on Netflix. Edge Runners? Yeah, the cyberpunk anime that everyone's gone apeshit for in the last few months. Okay, okay. That caused a gigantic resurgence in the video game and people actually going and playing it and enjoying it as opposed to just shitting on it because it didn't live up to their initial expectations. <laughs> um, yeah, like they hit their peak player numbers for the video game after the anime came out because the anime is hella good. Uh, that Kickstarter would have done a lot better. Nice. Okay. Mortal Chaos moving to Tennessee soon. It's going to pick up some games in Infinity because he's already scouted out a game group there. Awesome. Zombicide Black Plague, 4 million. Original Zombicide only picked up 700,000. That is very low. Deus Rex, thanks for the Prime sub. Stoogy, thanks for the Prime sub. We appreciate the Prime subs, y'all. Twenty-one more to go before the giveaway. All right, y'all. Twenty-one. Then we're gonna do the giveaway. Baratheon's Hero Box Numero Three. Six nice character minis from the Baratheon line to the game. SF. Yes, this is Black Templar. Why are you cursing me, Cornflake Justice? Yo, thanks for the YouTube videos. Only just got into miniatures and learned so much from you and the other channels. Who is the other person talking? Who is the other person talking? What other person? What other person? There are no other people here. Office chairs. That's right. I can ask for the Lord. Jimmy Hayes, 23, gifting five subs. Five subs? Jimmy Hayes! Five subs. I know you. Also, just to answer your question, his name is Evan. He is my stream producer. He follows the chat. Does all the camera switching when he feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, let's uh, mm, let's look at that paint rack for a second. Oh, it's real nice. Oh, yeah. Yes, if you got a gifted sub from Mr. Jimmy Hayes, make sure to thank him in the chat, just like Dead Zone did. Man, I wish I was a Herman Miller, Aaron. I'd be high class then. What are you, if not high class? I'm definitely not high class. Sad. I'm like a $150 Ikea office chair, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You gotta believe in yourself, Evan. Maybe, maybe that is what we should do, Mike Cheney. We should, we should put in point redeems that make me switch the cameras. Spend spend ten thousand channel points when we look at the paint rack together for ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the paint rack. <laughs> we could probably do that. I'm gonna guess you could probably link any arbitrary action on stream to some kind of like point redemption? Probably. A5H, or maybe it's Ash, donating five bucks. Hey! My favorite painting cocktail is weed and coffee combo. Do what? you have one, Scott? Wait, how do you combine? Oh, I guess like you get like a weed, weed drink and then you mix it with coffee? Well, that's interesting. A little I... upper, two uppers, honestly. Um, Weeds and upper? Well, it increases your heart rate. Um, so I don't, I don't know, because obviously, like, certain strains of weed make you relax and chill out, but 
your heartbeat is still the entire time. Today I learned. Yeah. I so let me it's not so bad that you're like freaking out the entire time. At least not the people that I know that smoke weed. This guy doesn't understand the drugs. I don't. Teach me, please. Uh what up, Zambies? What can I get for 50k points? You can get a 50k bet that I'm going to win the next AOS game. Yeah, right now, basically the channel points, you can highlight your messages or you can bet against the bank, which is Mike Genie. <laughs> Guy's got like 300,000 points or something. Mike Genie. He keeps putting it all on black. And black keeps coming up with the win. <laughs> So much stuff. Zambies is challenging you to war cry at Adepticon, Scott. Okay. My stream is gonna play War Cry. I think Curtis is playing War Cry against uh Dan. Um on the 29th of December, the, the Thursday after Christmas. I believe that's correct. So I will I will probably learn a little bit about the game. And I can bring some of my soul blight grave lords to bear. Is Warcry just Kill Team but Fantasy? I believe so. Sorry, but AOS, not Fantasy. Get it right, bro. <laughs> Mike Genie at the Miniac, the, Mike, the Miniac Points Federal Reserve. <laughs> I'll take it. I love playing games at Adepticon. It's always a matter of just finding finding the time to do it. Because I'm often like running around like a madman. Warcry is Kill Team without the rules blood. Is there a lot of rules blood in Kill Team? I mean, that is a little bit. It's not like super bad. But I mean, it's, it's a GW game. It's not super tight either, though. You ain't getting no one page rules or anything like no, that. No, no, no. Well, they tried. They tried that with AOS, you know? Sure, they did. Yeah, I'm really curious if a one page rules rule set is actually any good. Because, you know. You know, I love shitting on GW just as much as the next guy. But like, <laughs> is one is one page rules? Are those rule sets actually good? Because I know they have like, there's a one page version, and then you can like, if you're like a patron, you can like get like a four page version, and then oh. of course there's the big ones. <laughs> to the Miniac flagpole at 3 p.m. It's got the fucking bugle going. There's a lot of secondaries and tack ops. And Back up, sit through IMO. Okay, so that's how they get you. They do the exact same thing that GW does. They put a third of the rules in the fucking rule book. They put a second third in your fucking army book, and they put the third third in your opponent's army book. Well, that's Warsmith you... says that, well, sorry, Warsmith Paint says, mm -hmm. can confirm the rule sets are actually good. Okay, okay. Mike Gene's got a money bin like Scrooge McDuck for channel points, dude. Yeah, I mean he ain't he ain't clinching so much that money as much as Scrooge is though. Hey, chat! Remind me that on the way home I need to uh, pick up some washers for my three burner. I thought you were gonna be like, I need to uh, not die in the snow. <laughs> that too. <laughs> is it snowing right now? No, no, no. It's not gonna start until tomorrow. Okay. It's not going to start until our pagan ritual begins. Ah, yeah. For this winter solstice. Okay. Can't confirm the rules are actually good. It's funny because you think I'm joking. What? Uh, so tomorrow is my family party, party where the mummers come. Mumming is an old English tradition that was labeled a pagan tradition by the Catholic Church. I mean, I, I thought you were referring to just general Christmas, which the way Americans celebrate is based on a pagan re religion. That's true, too. Or I not mean, religion. That's, that's just them co-opting uh, the the rituals of other peoples and saying, uh, this, yeah. they're, they're pulling a green stuff world. Yes. This is mine. <laughs> the Catholic Church recolors a holiday and then slaps their label on it and says, this is Christian holiday. <laughs> Washer spam activate. 
teaching two war cl classes at Adepticon if you want to get schooled properly. Hey, so if you guys are going to Adepticon, you want to learn how to play Warcry, I believe for free. Is that correct, Zambies? Did you just say that? Am I dumb? Uh, check out Zambies class. Zambies does say it's free. Nice. Missing out on an, on an opportunity to monetize your brand. Sure, I can teach you how to play Warcry for money. Make that money, Zambies. What are you doing if you're not making money? On the topic of one page rules, once upon a time, Vince, I think I might have said this in the stream at one point, he gave me like a challenge. He was like, if you want to get good at making rules, you gotta start out by just running a bunch of rule sets and like, like try to make a rule set in one page and just do that like once a day for like a year straight, just to see, you know, how good can you get at writing clear and concise rule sets? It's not, you're not necessarily making a, a totally complete game, but you're kind of, you're more experimenting. And you just said, what do you know, old man? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll do it my own way. Exactly. I'm doing it all wrong, <laughs> shit. That random ass dagger just hanging down in the middle. Okay, I painted it with black contrast. Yeah, that would be a really annoying spot for his knife to be hanging. I know, it seems so weird. It'd be like constantly slapping into his thighs. I know. I appreciate how the guys who have their daggers drawn don't have don't have the dagger in the sheet. Amazing. I'm just a war cry pusher. The first hit is free. Nice. <laughs> Emergency dagger for nut time. Nut time? You heard it here. Nut time's alive and well. Very much so. Nut time. No dagger, but I got some sweet trauma shears. Will that work? It could. It could. Man, batch painting. Fucking A, man. It takes forever, eh? trick is Scott you just have to paint faster I feel like I'm painting pretty fast I mean other than just stopping occasionally to have a little conversation but I guess in general just painting faster will make the process go faster as well yeah it's just like how the secret to having good looking models is to just get better at painting yeah exactly I think there's a story behind the phrase trauma shears. This is fucking lightning speed compared to Scott's usual process. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much.
brushes am I using right now? I mean, right now I'm just using a random brush. It looks like a phalanx brush from Game Envy, but it is not because the brush is nice. I mean, it's a synthetic brush, so it's, it's a lower quality brush. So that's why I'm using it, because I don't care about what's happening to it right now by dousing it in paint product. But Game Envy is a good, good brand. I like Kittrick. He's a nice guy. I like his wet palette. I think his wet palette is my favorite hobby produced wet palette. Mer. What up, Just Sapuku? I still think you should try freezing the minis. If the ship was resin, it could crack off the softer, less rigid plastic. Just a thought, but happy to watch you repaint and try new techniques. I, I will, I'll try. It's just like in some situations, it's just. I tried to crack it off and it took the paint with it. So, I mean, like, obviously it's worth trying it just to see what happens, but there's just so much, there's so much in, caught in the little nooks and crannies that it's just gonna, you know, I don't know if it's gonna really make much of a, of a difference, but on some of these ones that have less shit on them, it could be like this one, I don't know. If I could clean up the face and the neck and it was like kind of stuck in the hair, I wouldn't really care about the hair. The hair is kind of easy enough to paint. I mean, make... the hair is kind of a blob anyway. Kind of, yeah. It's easy to make it look like hair. Yeah. Does the Touches. mini fridge have a freezer in it? What was that? Does the mini fridge have a freezer in it? It has like one of those tiny baby ones. Yeah. I think so, yeah. I've been using Rosemary & Co. recently since I found out they're the one who make Artist Opus brushes and they're pretty decent. I would say that's a pretty great description of Artist Opus. They're pretty decent. Um, we've also had pretty good luck with them. They're not super thick. They're kind of skinny boys. Thick. Skinny boys and girls, so not amazing for like standard, uh, I mean painting larger figures and doing base coats because it's not a huge reservoir for paint, but like they're still nice, nicely priced sable hair brushes. Yeah, Ron Robin, you are correct. Um, yeah, the Rosemary and Co. brushes seem fine. I don't know. I'd like to pick up one of their packs. Uh, it's just hard to justify when I can get the Monument ones for cheaper. But Rosemary & Co., I believe, are made in England. And the Monument Hobby ones, I believe, are made in Germany. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it might. You never know. Yes, Ron Robin. Those were the ones. <laughs> I appreciate the sentiment, just Sapuku. Reedon says, I just nabbed Greyjoy Starter. What boxes should I go for next? I would say Heroes Box 2 and Silenced Men. And maybe a second, maybe a second unit of Archers? Uh, definitely a second unit of Archers. You know, you don't always have to run two units of Archers. In fact, I rarely do, but there are definitely some strong lists with two units of Archers. Uh, I, my, my inclination is... Uh... You don't always have to run two units of archers because sometimes you want to run three units of archers. Don't do it. Do it. Flood the board. Become free folk. Yes. Just just run all trappers and archers. Um, skip the trappers. More archers. Uh, trappers have always been beloved by Greyjoy players. Yeah. I, I don't think that that's well earned because every time I play against Greyjoy, trappers just explode. And then Greyjoy players declare that they did their job and I go okay I got a victory point off of them and then I went and killed the bowman too um, I will say that I haven't run trappers in a while but 
For four points with Asha, they seem okay. But lately, I've been running Asha in Archers, and she lives in the game. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, the other one to pick up, Silenced Men. Yes. Or not it's Silenced Men, Drowned Men. Drowned Men are Don't really be. good. They're okay. You also get three of them in a box. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, Dr Drowned Men facilitate playing the game. And they also are tougher than any of the other four pointers, which is ridiculous. <sighs> unless unless you're fighting an army with precision, drawn men are really, really tough. Or auto wounds. Yeah. That's pretty rare. Yeah. Drowned men, silenced men. If you like the look of Black Tide Chosen, you can go for them. I don't think they have much of a place in Great Joy List at the moment. I think Greyjoy struggles to uh, have a cohesive list identity right now. I think Iron Makers are also pretty decent. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But um, my inclination is that Greyjoy is headed for a substantial buff um, in the upcoming patch. So. When is the patch set to release? They, they haven't said. Uh, theoretically, it's on a one year cycle, which means sometime January, February, March ish. I have reason to believe that it'll be earlier, but who knows? I also had reason to believe that print on demand cards were going to be a thing because they said they were. And, uh, well, it's been a year. They were not. Hey, print on demand is coming soon, Scott. It said so right in the post for the SO1 update. It's a cool idea. It's a great idea. And they have the industry contacts to make it happen. It just, for whatever reason, never did. It's just very frustrating because I want my updated cards, God damn it. God damn it. Hmm. Okay. I don't really know what my next step should be in this process. But I, I have finished all the airbrushing and I've finished all the translucent paint work and so now it's time to start slapping on some actual base coats of paint and i don't know where to start i could start with the skin i could start with the brown pants i could start with these kind of more tanned colors which are like the weapon haft and the straps on his waist and whatnot um i don't know so i'm going to try out a couple different approaches here for the next step and see what feels best you're such a cute, manly man, Miniac. I love watching you wake up each morning from my window. I love you so much. I want to be more, and I want it to be more and be forever with you always, XO. Thank you, uh, Brigman TV. I feel the exact same way about you. Or not. Uh, there are some retailers in the US that can do it as far as I know. Oh, you're referring to uh, the two brush brands we were talking about earlier. This guy's belt is kind of like covered up by his axe haft. Means that you don't have to paint it. Pretty much. Uh, Scott, have you always been passionate about painting minis? Or when you first began, did you ever find it tedious? Um, I feel like I have always found it tedious at every point in my hobby career. I mean, there are parts of painting that will kind of just always feel tedious. Um, like, I'm not necessarily on top of the world right now batch painting this unit of Silenced Man. Like, I had a lot of fun painting the one Silenced Man. Like, that was fun. And, like, the more I do it, the more I kind of just get a little drained by the process. But I did have a lot of fun, like, airbrushing and kind of figuring out that whole process. But, you know, it waxes and wanes. Um, depending on the model, depending on how long I've been paying, depending on my mood, you know, it's, it comes and goes. To lick or not to lick? That is the question, beard man. 
All right, I think that can be metal, right? Yeah, it'll be metal. Let's hit that up with a little bit of brown. Oh, and the straps around the knife itself. Okay, okay, okay. All right, that's okay. All right, so we tried that out. Let's try painting something else. Let's try maybe giving a layer or two to the pants or the gauntlets that all ended up being brown. I don't know what color to use. Maybe maybe brown leather is the right choice here from Scale 75. I just picked up some easy to build primary space marines. I wanna paint one of them with 100% Balzac and try to do that with the exact same model one year apart. I'm curious of the outcome. Has anyone here ever tried to do something like that? I've done something like that, but not explicitly that. Like I painted a model a long time ago and then went and found a same or similar model and then painted that as a means of comparison. But I didn't do it, I didn't paint the original one with the express purpose to compare later. Free Folk player here painting the watch for a friend, but those Calamaris are so awful. What is dead may never die. Painting the watch for a friend. So you're painting Night's Watch and you're saying that my Greyjoy are bad? How dare you? Just finished painting the huge Dragon King model from KDM. So proud. What are your thoughts on painting big models compared to small models? I find that I tend to enjoy painting large scale models, but not big, small scale models, if that makes any sense. I don't like painting dragons, giants necessarily, but I do enjoy painting, do enjoy painting like 75 millimeter models. You enjoyed painting that ogre. Yes. What you call that, is that, I don't know if he's talking about the same thing though. Dragon King model is like, it's like big. It's no, big. I know, that's fair. I just mean like that is a big, small scale model though. That is true. And I do, I did enjoy painting that for sure. If you're gonna lick your brush, just make sure it isn't radium based. True that. Adding blood to the axe? Yeah, the OG one has some blood on it. What up, Nurgle Matthew? Speaking of big mouths, where can I send this forest elf bust STL? You could put it in the miniatures um, chat channel on my Discord. Oh boy, oh boy, this is not the right color. He says as he continues to paint with it. But yeah, that, I mean, that is the exact same color that I used on the original model, but it is a little too light. All right, let's pop over to the, the old rack here and see if we can find something a little bit darker more suitable. I couldn't mix paint. I prefer not to if I don't have to for this. Let's just try the old GW paint, the Rhinox High. That one's pretty good. Oh, or tank brown. Tank brown. Oh, or this one. Okay, we got some options. Reddish brown? Okay, we got some options. Chat. Sick bruh. Is the Discord only patrons? It's only patrons slash Twitch subscribers. So either one can get in. Yeah, you're a uh, two-month subscriber, so you should be on the Discord. If you're not on there, that means that you need to link your Twitch and your Discord account. Go to Settings, Connections, Twitch. Once it's connected, it shows the Miniac Discord under Twitch, and you can click Join. I feel like using Discord makes me stay inside too much. <laughs> I think it's the reverse. You stay inside too much, so you use Discord. Because <laughs> that's how it is for me. Yeah, I mean, video games in general. 
pretty much do similar things or anything on the computer or living in Minnesota yeah or being a homebody or all those things put together yeah so, some combination of those various factors all right we got some browns all right this one is rhinox high and i am gonna guess this is gonna do the best for us just because not only is it a little bit satin like the uh the instant paint um was but also it's pretty damn dark so dang dark The other option with speed painting, for like a unit or something like this, is if you kind of get into a situation like I'm in right now and you feel like none of the paints are really working for you, um, you can have both on your palette at the same time and like say apply one to the shadows and then apply another to the highlights um, and then kind of just switch back and forth between them. That is, uh, I don't know, to me that's not a terrible way to speed paint. Like I just kind of, clean my brush a little bit and feathered that dark brown into that lighter brown. And while you can't see it super well right here, but that created a nice blend. And it didn't require me to apply one whole layer of light brown and then one whole layer of dark brown or vice versa. I could do uh, one after the other. Um, I'm sorry, I could like paint one part of the model that and then the other part of the model that. So the only thing that I'm being slowed down by is cleaning my brush and getting a new paint in it. Maybe we'll do that. Let's test out tank brown though. It seems a little bit more yellow. It's an airbrush paint, so it will be thinner, which actually isn't terrible for what we're doing right now. I actually would prefer it to be thinner. More thinner, more gooder. In this situation, at least, yes. Downside being of this process is it's not going to produce as much contrast, but I think that's the winner. It cleans up kind of that nasty, like half base coat that sometimes speed paints, instant paints, and uh, contrast paints can produce um, while also giving us a little bit of contrast and also getting us closer to that brown that I'm looking for. Electomo just subscribed. Hey! Glad to have been able to commit this long to my favorite content creating crew. May the Miniacs live on. Hell yeah. Thanks for the support, Electomo. Who doesn't love a rousing discussion on viscosity? I know I do. I know I do. I really, really need to write shit down. All right, guys. You got a video here documenting it. No, I'm not. Oh, I can't find my notebook and I'm too lazy to go find it. <laughs> Is it on your desk maybe? I don't see it anywhere. No, I mean like on your desk in there. Oh. Oh, look. Maybe. It's got a vibrantly red cover. Yeah, I know the book. I kind of already forgot the exact colors that I used to paint his cloak and all that shit. And it looked so much like the original one that I had painted. And I knew I didn't use the same paints because I used Vallejo Express colors. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Producer Man. All right. Oh, right. Alex had it. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Let's not forget how I painted these guys. All right, so for the silenced men. Here's what it was. It was a black prime. It was a 
Scale 75 deep blue. Deep. We'll call it heavy Zenithal. Cause I didn't like really rebase coat the entire model, but I did apply, I did cover most of the black. But one thing I noticed about not priming models is that, and this is a test that I did a long time ago, is that the undercoat really matters. Like if I base coat deep blue on top of green plastic versus on top of black deep. primed plastic, it'll be it'll be a totally different color. Unless I like apply seven coats of paint. Thick. Okay. Then I did a scale 75 bearing blue zenithal. And I did I did multiple steps because at the same time I was painting my drowned men. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna paint them, so I wanted to give them more of a gradual buildup of color versus going straight from deep blue to what is my third third? Yeah. Third zenithal highlight of Vallejo ice yellow. Because going from ice yellow to deep blue, or sorry, vice versa of that, um, would cause a lot of speckle. So I needed, needed more of a gradual bump. Okay. And then after that, oh, you know what? Okay, I did the Zenithal highlight, but I avoided the cowls. So my test model, the final color on the cowl ended up being bearing blue. And so when I applied that zenithal ice yellow highlight, I actually avoided um, the cowl entirely. I remember that. Avoid cowl. Deep. And void cowl? Void cowl. Like void blending? Yes, it's exactly like it actually. Okay, then I believe void I used blending. this lovely, lovely turquoise ink from oh yeah baby from vallejo game color vgc turk ink vgc you know as as a fan of vince's every time i see a question in chat my first inclination is to respond with oh vince has a video on that yeah which is a fair response uh any suggestions for painting an army in a moonlit OSL slash nighttime style? I swear to God, Vince did a video on that like two months ago. Um, Drew Barry, do you happen to have an airbrush? Because the answer will change depending on that. Six, grave, uh, grave, yard. I do. Fantastic. Um, I'd go with a dark blue prime and then a light blue zenithal application of light uh, applied very, very directed. So I wouldn't try to, if like this was the model's face, I would try to like airbrush just along the face and along a portion of the model and not try to spread it out too much. Because what really sells moonlight to me is something that's dimly lit. So I try to like really kind of enunciate the face, maybe like the streak down like his chest and like kind of his upper thigh, uh, him or her, but not not much elsewhere. Um, I mean, you could do that. You could do like a gray undercoat with a white dry brush and then covering it in blue ink and that'd give you more uh, readability because maybe your dry brush hit other parts of the model and you can kind of get that glinting going on. Um, those are some ideas. You're definitely gonna when you're doing your highlights instead of going to a warmer color like you would with sunlight you know like ice yellow you're you're pushing into that sunlight sunny yellow color with that highlight if you're highlighting into the moonlight go pale go cool go spooky seven sc75 or just follow Vince's guide, which I linked in the chat. Nice. I mean, the video is always going to be better because he's going to show you his thoughts and you're going to see and judge for yourself if that's what you want. And it's Vince, who's a national treasure. So national. He's at least an Ohio treasure. <laughs> I actually... 
I'm working on this my video right now about Vince, and I don't, I really don't know the angle for the video. I don't know how to make it YouTube friendly. Originally, my idea for an angle was I'm going to paint a lot in a week. So I painted 60 hours uh, for seven days, Oof. which is a lot. It's a lot of painting. I did a lot of hobbying. I got a lot, got a lot done. Um, but the video seems more to be about Vince than it is about me painting for 60 hours. Um, and so I don't know what the angle is for YouTube. I'm trying to figure that out. What would get you guys to click on a video about Vince Vintarella? Highlight into your complimentary color for a moonlit saturation. Or you could just use a desaturated color in the first place. Um, instead of having a bunch of funky colors going on, potentially. Look at the fuck out of it. This man is a hobby monster. This guy paints more than your grandma. I mean, that is true. That's true, yeah. Not hard, though. Probably. Okay. Oh, I forgot. There was one more airbrush step. The most dangerous man in mini painting. <laughs> Vallejo... Express Omega Blue. You know, chat, they say don't meet your heroes. You'll be disappointed. And I have been disappointed by people I've met in my life. But Vince delivered. When he was out here a few months back, everything I expected and more. I built those chariots he sent me, by the way. I'm glad that your, uh, your relationship with Vince is budding. How could it not be? How could it not be? You guys both love weird TV shows. <laughs> How dare you? My taste in shows is perfect and completely normal. Vince is right and you're wrong. Here's why. I yes. hobbied for 60 hours in a week, so you don't have to. I could definitely lean into the I hobbied for a long time. I just think that I don't have a ton of footage of me hobbying a ton. It, it was more about the interview with Vince, and that's kind of on me. I didn't record a ton of stuff. I'll have to look into it, actually. I, what What is most jarring about Vince and his existence is not that he just paints a lot. It's that he so consistently paints a lot. Yeah, that is it. It's the amount of stuff he completes in a year. Yeah, exactly. You know, going on a sprint for a week or two because you have a big project or you're in the groove or whatever, that's, I would say, pretty normal miniature hobbyist. But it seems like Vince is just always in that mode of just, yeah, you know, I just painted for five hours yesterday. It was sick. It was sick. <laughs> uh, whoa, you have a Twitch? Yeah, I've had a Twitch for like... Seven years. A long time. Yeah, maybe not seven, maybe like six years. I haven't always been active on it for those six years, but I think for a decent amount of time. Okay. We've been real consistent about it the last uh, couple six of, months? Couple months, yeah. Something All right. like that? Yeah, that sounds right. The last paint I just used um, was not the right color. Uh-oh. It's too Better red. Better cross so. that out in the book then. I didn't even put it in the book. I didn't get to grace the book yet. Ah. Uh. Yeah, Tank Brown from Vallejo is the winner for a couple of reasons. The right hue, and also it's just the right amount of dilution. Just right out of the bottle. Don't gotta fuck with it at all. I remember the time of YouTube live streams. Yeah, those were crazy, dude. We got like over, we got like 1,200 viewers during those live streams. Those are nuts. Yeah, we could do that. We certainly could. I think now, especially that I have a channel that is separate from my main channel, I would be, feel very okay streaming to that YouTube channel. Hello, mini fam. What is chat working on today? Personally, I've never understood the appeal of marathon painting videos. Like, yeah, I hope they painted for 60 hours. They have a YouTube channel. They have a painting YouTube channel. You'd be surprised at uh, how little a painting YouTuber 
a, a hobbyist YouTuber can paint in a given week, depending on what videos they're working on. The other thing about that, about like, whoop do you do a YouTuber painted for 60 hours, which by the way is a very fair critique, I'm not, I'm not uh, at all criticizing what you're saying, is that very often the kind of painting that we're doing is not necessarily the kind that we want to be doing, like for our hobby. Um, like for instance, I uh, would love to work on my Soul Black Grave Lords and my Grey Joy a ton, and I, I wouldn't necessarily do that in a video. Uh, and if I would, it wouldn't be like about painting a unit, you know? I don't think that, that sells week after week. Um, but if I just make a video about painting a lot in a given set of time, then I can paint whatever I want. And that is fun and that's good. Which is why you might see a painting marathon video. That's why I was saying what I was saying. Scott, why'd you ultimately decide to stream on Twitch and not YouTube if that's shareable info? It absolutely is uh, shareable info. Scott, you plan to do a blog in January? I seem to remember you saying you might do that regularly, though I think you skipped last year. I think that's fair. I don't think I stopped working in January last year. I think I kept working because uh, I was working for uh, my Kickstarter campaign. Um, what I normally do in January is take January off. And then in February, I come back and I, I liked the idea of making a bunch of vlogs in February. One day, one for every day of the week. Um, and I still like that idea, and I think I would like to try to do it, if possible. Rookie numbers. Jimmy Hayes, I don't know what to tell you, man. You promoted the channel in a couple videos recently. I'm talking about Northern Conquerors and some other stuff. What's been there? there talking about the backlog channel yeah if you don't, guys don't know um if you're looking for vods from this channel particularly older ones because the vods on twitch stay up for a bit automatically but eventually they disappear into the ether but the miniacs backlog youtube channel which i believe is linked in our bio on here and you can find via the miniac channel and you can find via the link i'm going to post in just a second here uh, has older VODs. <laughs> and it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It doesn't have a real boy URL yet. No, it does not. We have to hit, what, 10K subs for that or something? I don't know what it is. It's like some amount of hourly or some amount of views over the course of a month or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is. Do you take off Twitch and YouTube in January? What? Uh... Oh, 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 are you going to do the post-holiday break this year? I think I would like to, although Squidmar hates that idea. <laughs> I was just talking, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of of two minds. Like, recently I've been really into playing the YouTube game, which is not necessarily in a negative way. Just, like, I'm really excited about improving the metrics on my channel, which I go through seasons of this. Sometimes I really want to play the YouTube game and get a lot of, you know, see a huge growth in my channel or, or a bigger growth. And sometimes I'm kind of like, you know what? I want to do my own thing. I don't care about YouTube and what it wants from me. And uh, ML, he, he more or less threatened me. And he was like, if you take off for a month in January, it will be three months until you are back to your typical performance on YouTube. And I'm like, fuck, okay. Um, so I, I do want to do that. And there are a lot of things that I have to do for the channel. Um, okay, so I, I want to set up these a lot of streaming things. I want to like, I have this whole backlog on Trello that I've been kind of keeping track of. Um, so I think it'd be good for the channel for me to take a little bit of a break just so I can sort some shit out. Uh, but it will fuck up my metrics, which is kind of why I wanted to come back swinging with uh, five vlog videos, just one after the other. I think that would kind of resuscitate the channel. I mean, it's certainly stuff that we could make content around too. Like, uh, redoing the gaming stream set i know we've talked about realigning all these cameras and stuff and getting it happier right yeah things like that absolutely uh, i could also i mean i have a couple of videos that are fully shot not edited and they've been that way for a very long very long time and i could have alex just edit those while i was, I am, I was uh, about to say it sure would be helpful if you had like a you know full-time editor that could that could do that yeah the only problem being that 
his main priority is working on those Kickstarter videos and not these on the main channel right now. Those are closing in on completion though, right? Yeah, uh, he is, uh, he's 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 well over halfway through John's class and then after that, mine's left. Um, but that is another thing that I was thinking about if I took time off in January that I would do. I would uh, help him just finish up all that stuff so that I can just Skaver gifting a sub. Hey, you, to Skaver. useless wizard. Hey, like I like both those people. Uh, but yeah, just wanna I want to get out from under this Kickstarter campaign so that I can live my life. I feel like I say that a lot about various other commitments. Maybe I should just commit to nothing. <laughs> That's the lesson I'm learning right now. <clears throat> yeah. No commitment, just wing it all. Heck yeah. Listen, you made the short charts happen, Scott, so I'm proud of your accomplishments this year. Thank you. That's all I needed to do. Well, they're not really short shorts, though. They're just shorts. That's true, they're not short shorts. They're not long shorts. They're not like board shorts or anything like that, but they aren't, they aren't volleyball, like, girls volleyball short shorts oh, but they should be though wampasaurus what up love love seeing other fellow minnesotan hobbyists um hey scott great news got a job offer after losing my job last week that's awesome glad to hear uh kahasu says chasing the youtube metrics is what burned out lots of content creators in the past it is addictive and has no end uh, yeah I'm, I'm aware it's an, it's unfortunate in that way um, but you know, every once in a while when you're feeling that motivation, you gotta kind of ride it until it goes away. And then when it goes away, then you stop riding it. It's kind of like, uh, is it? Okay. Yep. What is 404? Okay. How close am I? And let me see if I can finish painting these brown pants and then we'll, uh, we'll get up on out of here. Custom Zombies, Zambies, X Miniac, Short Shorts, Collab 2023. Definitely has that juicy on the ass. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. I solemnly swear to you, Mike Genie, that at some point in the future, I don't know if it's going to be this year or next year or the year after that, but I will have some fucking legendary Short Shorts and they'll have like the sick little white stripe around the edge and they'll be fucking tiny and I'll sell them with a pair of those white tube socks that has like a red stripe on the top just so you can go full fucking 80s okay I may mean, not do the sock thing but the short short thing I definitely want to make a reality you're done is it gonna say maniac on the ass <laughs> can't wait to rollerblade these fuck out of here um I probably won't take time off the podcast if you're curious about that. And I also will play on the occasional live stream. I could, I could paint too. It's not a huge deal. Yes, it will definitely say Miniac on the ass. Or moist. What if, that, what if it said moist on the ass? Jesus Christ. Might get sued. Too close to juicy. Too close. Thank you, Andwin. Painting while rollerblading. Now that's what I call content. Yeah, dude. You had not, Alex? Okay, cool. Is that a cryptic metaphor? Or? Okay. The Super Gamer Boy is gifting five subs. Hey, Super Gamer Boy. How, surely we are way closer to 50. We're at, we're at 41 now. Really? I thought there was even more that you that you might not have you might not have gotten. No, nah, I'm checking them off as I go. Okay. So we got eight more subs, and then we're giving away this Baratheon Hero Box 3. We're ending the stream probably in the next 10 or 15 minutes here. So if you guys want to make this giveaway happen at the end of the stream, 
throw us those Prime subs, you know? If you have Amazon Prime, you can attach it to your Twitch, and you can sub to one channel for free every month. You gotta do it every single month. It doesn't happen automatically. So we appreciate your Prime subs. Hey, Italian Spartacus! There's a Prime sub. But yes, you could be the proud owner of one of six models, one of which looks like this here Stannis Baratheon. Not just one of six. You you get to own all six. You get all six. That's true. Doom Traveler says, is your sub call out from the Medieval Madness pinball machine? I can't remember which one it is, but I think it's from Dead Alive. Yeah. Is it that one? Yeah. Oh, I kick ass for the Lord. Seven more subs doing a giveaway. Let's get it, stream. Chat to you. Oh, we got a couple more subs. Slyish Live and Andween. Thank you for the Prime subs. You appreciate it. Gonna need those collab shorts to be split die from Shibori Threads for sure. I don't know what that is. What's Shibori Threads? Is that, is that another brand? Definitely, definitely the right choice. I might want to add another highlight. Is that crazy? Am I crazy? Here, let me just try it briefly. I'm gonna take some of this graveyard earth. Or actually, it's Gobi Brown, already on the palette. I'm gonna mix it with this tank brown here. Let's just, let's just see what happens here. J Spell and MFK, MF Kimya, motherfucking Kimya. Thank you for the subs, y'all. Five more subs to go. Uh, they make Less. all dope deathcore merch. Three more subs stick out. Three more subs. Wait, well, where'd the sub go go? Okay, there it is. Every time I manually update it, it has to go away for a second. Okay, gotcha. This is all just a long con to get Scott double cheeked up on stream. What does double cheeked up mean? Showing off the booty? You want to see my booty, Mike Jr. I know you. I just linked uh, the clip from Dead Alive that includes the quote that the uh, nice. sub notification is from. If you if you guys want to watch the scene, this is uh, it's like is it Peter Jackson's second movie? I don't know which one it is, but it's definitely one of his earlier on ones. It's from 1992. I know that because it's in the YouTube description, but. Uh, you used to like making schlock. Schlock. Should I go? Should I go Martell or Renly B? Oh, uh, Martell is cool. Um, Renly is not as good as Stannis. So, if you win the giveaway, you're Stannis side baby because Heroes Three is all Stannis. Uh, if you don't win the giveaway, then uh, Martell is pretty sweet and is very good. <laughs> Come back another week because we have a lot of Martell stuff to give away. <laughs> Unless I leave with some of this. Mm. Mm. You can't no, actually, I already bought all this stuff, so. Oh, did you? I thought about putting in a requisition request for one of these, but then I was just like, ah, I'm just going to buy it. Who am I kidding? Evan, not stealing from the, the viewers. It's too bad if we were if we were streaming song last week. I would have said that we should give it away day before release. Oh, I don't know if they would have been okay with that. I think they'd be fine with it. They were already in the app. I think. Oh, okay. I mean, like they announced all that stuff. Yeah, not a huge deal. We don't have any secret stuff here right now. No secret stuff. Right now. It was his second. His first was bad taste. Oh, I can't. 
Fred Erst. They've given, oh, oh wait, no. Mike Genie gifted a sub to Fred Erst. God damn, 127, 127 gifted subs, Mike Genie, you fucking Chad. Thank you so much for the support, my friend. Two subs away. Uh, uh, giveaway will be live when we get two more subs, and then we'll have to stay live for like 15 minutes. Yes, we'll do a giveaway. <laughs> it's Fred Durst, by the way, that he gifted us up to. Fred Durst. Fred Durst. I mean, it is all one lowercase word on here. That, that's the problem. The Fred Durst. Yeah. Four chili subscribing at tier one. Hey. Seven months in a row. One away. Let's see it. Who's gonna who's gonna be the linchpin? The Kaminsky. Uh, the Kaminsky. There we go. All, All right. right. Give me a second here. So he's gonna set that up. All you have to do to enroll in this is that you have to be a follower of the channel. That is it, literally. Well, and you have to type in chat when I tell you to, but. That that too, yes. Uh, still Collins says, if you can't handle me at my Durst, you don't deserve me at my, at my Freds. <laughs> All this means, chat, is that I have more time to pay my Greyjoy army, and I am very okay with that. Whether or not Amber is okay with that. We're Sorry, unsure. Ams, we've got to go an extra 15 minutes. We're unsure. Actually, let's make this a quicker giveaway. Let's go 10 minutes on this. 10 minutes. We're having mercy on Amber right now. Yeah. Well, we're already 15 minutes over, so I'm trying to make sure we're out of here by 4.30. Gifted a sub. We're at 50. Yes. KD in LA. Thank you for the gifted sub to Ace Face. Ace Face. Boom. Starting it. Exclamation mark moist in chat to enter. Exclamation mark moist in the chat. Get in there. Win them Brenleys. <laughs> them Brenleys. <laughs> them Brenleys. <laughs> I don't even know what that fucking is. Brenly. If your exclamation mark moist came in before the Streamlabs message, you are not entering in the giveaway. So re retype it. Yeah, just type it like five or six times. Yeah, yeah the more you type it, the better chance you have of, get of winning it, right, Evan? No. But for the purposes of comedy, yes. <laughs> We're joking, by the way. Yes. Again, for the purposes of comedy, I will lie and say yes. However, if you type one moist, that doesn't enter you. It has to be an exclamation mark. Yes. I want to say that that's one of my favorite old world internet memes. Was someone excitedly typing exclamation marks and then there would be the number one. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it became yeah. a thing where people would type out the word yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, man. That was classic. That's like internet 10 years ago, 12 years ago yeah. type shit. I still make that fucking joke, dude. Yeah, me too, because it's the best. Yeah. And I'm an old man. Old man. Okay, do I need to paint these pants again? I don't think I do. They're lower down on the model, so it's okay for them to be dark. Yeah, I think what I, what I what I should do is I should paint the rest of the model, and then I'll just I'll just see. I'll look and see. Rar XD four twenty no scope. Uh, X exclamation mark moist. The simpler times, indeed. I also remember correcting my three hundred baud rate mode of doing message board. I don't. Okay, so I know baud from my time at uh you know being an engineer um at school but i never remember having to use baud rates like um for like my any of my own electronics at home that's nuts dude i definitely would like uh if if i had a functioning soundboard in front of me occasionally you sit there thinking like frozen in time oh just do a little dial-up sound i want that dial-up sound <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, I do. Every once in a while, just kind of like lose my train of thought. Scott.exe has stopped responding. Would yeah. you like to close program or wait? Yes. Hopefully it's not as bad as Premiere Pro not responding because my God. 
I'll continue waiting because I just realized I haven't saved my Premiere file in two hours. Yeah, exactly. And the autosave just doesn't fucking work in this program ever. So sad. You reopen it and it goes, we recovered your files. And you go, great. And then it didn't. It's lying. No. I've lost so many hours of work with Premiere Pro. <sighs> just crashing out of fucking nowhere. I don't know why. Because it's a high quality piece of software that everyone loves. <laughs> and and no one has ever said anything negative about. <laughs> All right, y'all. Right now we're giving away Baratheon box number three. Baratheon heroes number three. Type exclamation mark moist in the chat and be a follower to get entered into the giveaway. Six minutes left on that. Six minutes left. Okay. What am I going to do next? I guess the belts. We'll do the belts. Well, you got six minutes. I'm unsure of how to do the skin still. Part of me wants to just paint it the good old-fashioned way. Um, Branu, mate. Branu mate. Is that what we're going with? I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. Branu mate. Oh, you know what? Okay. I might need to... I think some of these guys have ropes. That's what we'll do for six minutes. Ropes. I'm just going to roll us right into the next one because we've got these boxes. Let's do it. Heroes 4? Should we do a should we do a Martell thing? Martell? Sure. Martell. Oh, <laughs> Am I going to give the army frosted tips as well? Well, I tried to do that with uh, liquid plastic and it didn't work out great. So maybe I won't do that. We'll do Martell Starfell Outriders. Okay. So some of these guys, three of them specifically, have a uh, rope uh, just toward the top of the model. Which actually works out great because um, the other dudes that have, I, I like a little bit of extra brown toward the top. It kind of ties this color into the scheme better. Uh, the test model I had painted has like this gauntlet uh, on the top. And I didn't realize that not all of them have that gauntlet. Um, but the this gauntlet. helps tie that brown into the top a little bit more. Uh, KD in LA, Scott is currently wearing contacts. Because Scott's vision is not very good. No, it's not too good. It's not so bad that he can't wear uh, contacts, though. I could definitely paint without contacts in, but I could not paint and also see my monitor right next to me to check for focus and also to read chat. Yeah. I gotta paint two more of these rope boys. Ah, you are far sided. Scott, you didn't ruin your army. You just winterized it. That's all. Of course. Great joys are going to Flavor Town. I mean, that that is a potential solution too. Which Flavor is Town. Just, not yeah, to take them to Flavor, Flavor Town, to get Asha a pizza. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you just use it as an excuse to you know give them the Night's Watch treatment and put snow all over them. Oh, yeah. Just kind of cover up those spots and just say, yep, it's weathering. This one is encased in ice. Yep. All over his face. This is Balon Greyjoy, frostbitten. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in that giveaway. Exclamation mark moist in the chat. We're giving away Baratheon Heroes 3 thanks to your generosity. We appreciate those subs. We really do. And we have lots of song stuff to give away over the next couple streams here. Yeah. We can also mix it up, though. We like we doing could. giveaways. On the other hand, all you have to do is uh, win three roughly 100-person giveaways in a row, and you've got most of a song for us. The odds of that are, what, one in 100,000? Very narrow.
Oh no, sorry, excuse me. One in a million. Literally <laughs> one in a million. Because it's six zeros. Yeah. Easy. Oh. No problem. Ropes painted. We got more time still? One minute, 41 seconds. I'm on it, chat. I'm going to hide these. Advice, question mark? I've started streaming my D&D game with my family. What camera would you recommend? Would you, would love a nice film feel? Here's what you do. You get a real film camera. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, can, I, you, I don't Check know. the gate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Want to use ISO 500 film stock? No, I don't fucking know. Um... It all depends on your budget. I would say if you are rocking no budget, I would start with a webcam. Yeah, it depends on how much money you want to spend. It really does. Honestly, $100 webcams are insanely impressive, like Logitech Brio or that Razer one that I can't remember the name of. Um, but if you want to get a filmic look, you need a large sensor or a larger sensor camera than most of that stuff for that sweet, sweet depth of field. However, that sweet, sweet depth of field also means that they are not ideal for capturing a lot of uh, angles on the game field. Because now your, your focal depth is so narrow. Yeah, the Razer Keo. 15 seconds left in the giveaway chat. Exclamation mark moist to enter. Chat. Hey, thanks, idiot painter. I totally had forgotten about the washers. Oh, yes. Washers. Buy them. Yep. On the way home, I got to go to Ace. Pick up some washers. Good old Ace. Boom. Picking the winner. Electomo. Electomo. One of the last ones to come in for the sub. Love seeing a sub win it. Come on, Scott, paid faster. Holy smokes, you like Thomas. All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to whisper you. I'm going to save us some time. Yeah. Wow, you like Toma won like a year ago. Wow. Way. I think I he won a giveaway during the Kickstarter. Oh. Yeah, like that's cool. That is cool. So let me uh, double check. A Fujifilm X10 is a good, somewhat expensive camera, 800-ish. I mean, yeah. If we're going to talk 800 bucks, I, I definitely have some more recommendations for you. Redraw. Only one win per lifetime. Rigged. <laughs> ah. All right. Well, while he keeps messing with that, let me keep painting. Easy. All right. Well, I don't have to have you send me your stuff because I've got it all here already. Nice. Uh, Mike Genie, after 30 days, you are eligible to enter the giveaway again. At least according to the current rule set. I do believe that that's part of like the suggested FTC rules, but it's not mandatory. But, uh, whatever. Whatever. Chat, do you want to see me paint these silence men more or what? I can just bring them home and paint them there. I don't got to paint them on stream. I don't have an at home project at the Mo. All right. Uh, yeah, you do. Two. Fucking A, dude. Ah! <laughs> Got him. No! I don't want to do it again. It took so long the first time. Yeah, but that's what makes it a good at-home project. That it takes a while? That that it's um, a back burner type thing. When you I feel like painting and you want to recover. I say take him home so you got something to work on when you're buried in snow. Oh, yeah, that's true, <laughs> Look at me, I'm Mike Genie, and I make fun of Scott for ruining hours of work. Me. What project? Oh, just these silence, man. 
We'll probably do a bond stream one more time and then call it a day. If I don't finish by then, which I most certainly will not, because the skin isn't done yet, and that will take a long time. Okay. Contrast skin, baby. <sighs> Easy. Easy. Who should we? Uh, who should we raid? Who's who's available for raid? Uh, I was looking at it earlier, but that was that was like an hour ago. Let's let's take a gander. It was that guy who was asking about the giveaway here for the giveaway? Yeah. Uh, which? Oh, the one earlier? I don't know. I hope he was. Monument. I think we did Monument recently. I think we did Monument last week. Yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to do those guys again. Um, a lot of people are alive. Some uh, people I recognize, some I don't. Off, often they're going to be ones you recognize just because people are alive on a schedule. It's weird how that works. Yeah, I know, right? You did, you did Mohawk last week. Okay. Was that last week? I don't know. Honestly, I can't remember. We definitely did Monument and Mohawk in the last two weeks. So. Yeah. Is there a different person, maybe? I mean, we've got JW, we've got Deckflow, Crow Tuck, Gray TTV, Blue Frog Studio. Shady Nasties. Anyone got any preferences? Wolf Painting Studio. Cl Clodaclar. I don't know if I know many of these. Yeah, a lot of these names I'm not super familiar with. All right, what are the top three right now? Well, the top three right now are us, number one, Pog, uh, Pog. Mohawk, and Crow Tuck. What was the second one? Mohawk. Do, do Crow Tuck. I don't know what Crow Tuck is. I don't know either. Are they painting naked chicks? No. Okay. Painting. That's good. Let's finishing do that. this flash get. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do Crow Tuck. All right, y'all. We're gonna host or raid Crow Tuck, whoever that is. I'm excited for you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna head out though. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for subbing 50 times this stream for the giveaway. I mean, I'm, you're not idiots. I'm not idiots. Obviously, I'm benefiting from this more than than uh, than you guys are, and so. I really That's where you're wrong, because they're getting entertainment value out of this. That's true. I, I yeah, yeah. I mean, it's strictly a dollars to give away uh, reference. Um, I really appreciate the support, like, a lot. Um, so thank you so much for your subs, for your uh, donations as well. I know Ash came through with a donation this uh, this stream. Thanks for being in here and chatting in the chat. I always appreciate that as well, guys. Thank you so much. Did someone say idiot? I don't think so. Uh, Flavor Town Raid. First time hanging. Cool stream. Thank you, Lazy Couch. Appreciate you being here, man. Or lady. What up, Malev? All right, guys. I'm going to head out. Thank you guys for hanging out so much again. Have fun with Crow Tuck. We'll catch you this Thursday for an Age Sigmar stream and next Tuesday for a painting stream. If that's... No, that won't happen. I'll be in Wisconsin. Next Thursday. Last stream for a while for me, at least. So come hang out. Watch this place in Age Sigmar. All right, y'all. See ya. <laughs> so scuffed.